the show. We are here yet again for part two of today's TRCMA, I guess you could say activities, but uh, we've got some great stuff going on in this half. We have Rupus USA, we have Charlie Hutton, we have some great stuff. And obviously earlier today, you saw Kush Hemi, we had a lunch break, we had a little introduction uh, with some fun intro I guess you could say epic video, so you should check that out if you missed it. But by all means, uh, you're here now. Stay with us. Some great stuff coming up, and we will definitely be getting to your questions. So if you got questions about paint correction, any of that stuff, hit us up in the comments here. And as the show progresses, I will be dropping those on the screen for the guys to answer and, uh, you know, uh, demonstrate some stuff. So at any rate, without further ado, let's see our first guest here. Well, there you have wow. it. I mean, that was a lot of fun to watch. That was yourself. a ton of fun to watch. But what's even better is we've got people in studio. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to walk over here, and we've got Dylan Von Kleist and Troy Klinkenbeard of Rupes USA, and we got John's truck behind us. Yeah, so a lot of black paint. A lot of fun stuff. <laughs> a lot of black paint. A lot, lot, lot of car, right? A lot of truck. Well, what's fun about that is, you know, we've got this whole front half of this truck that he got that hasn't been touched. I don't think ever. By a polisher, yeah, yeah, which obviously. is one of the great things about it is you can see all the hand marks, you can see all the scratches that haven't been induced, and then he does have new clear on the bed because recent camping trip, uh, something fell from a very large height from an overpass <laughs> and <foot>. basically <laughs> hit his uh, truck, and so he's got uh, some bedsides that have been cleared, so we got some fresh clear. So we kind of got to make those two match, and one of the great things you guys have is you wanted to talk about some of the new products that Rupes has that a lot of people maybe haven't seen yet. Yeah. So. Yeah, we, and this is the perfect opportunity, right? We've got fully cured factory paint, fresh, untouched paint. We've got a hood that we've sanded down. Basically, the concept is today is we want to let everybody ask questions and have us demonstrate things live. We've done, I've done a number of Q&As with you guys. I did one just recently. Yeah. And people have questions, but we're sitting there in the podcast studio and talking, I can't show them. So try myself, we're gonna just start working. We're gonna work on these panels, we're gonna work on this truck, and we're gonna take questions. Uh, I think Dane's gonna lob them at us. And if there's a combination of stuff people wanna see, or if there's a process they wanna see, or if they wanna see if that combo can take out this defect, that's what we're going to try and do today, uh, live for the next two hours. As many as many <laughs> questions as people can throw at us, there you go. Uh, we're going to try it. We got a lot of black paint to work on, so I'm pretty sure we'll be able to accomplish all of it. Awesome, well, and, that is, and that's one thing that people want to see, right? And so people love the polishing. And every live that we've done in previous weeks, right? We we start a polishing, we, we start a polisher, and we start polishing paint, and people just seem to just. Like we're a moth to the flame. We, we yes, like shiny things. Know. We're simple creatures, I right? Know. We I joke know. that if you're at a car <laughs> show and you things. light up a polisher, people seem to tend to flock towards that vehicle because <laughs> the, they want to know what's going on. And what's just that the noise? sound of a polisher yeah. running, right? So what we'll be working with today, just to kind of cap everything up here so everybody knows what we're playing with. So we've got DA Course, which is our new course cutter for mm -hmm. orbital polishers. DA Fine, which is going to be the fine product. That's going to pair with blue wool, yellow wool, blue foam, or yellow foam pads. These are new as well. And then we're going to be playing with one of your guys' favorites, Uno Protect. So if anybody yep. wants to see anything on Uno Protect, we'll do that. And then we have Uno Pure, which is our ultra-fine finishing, and the white foam. So if anybody wants to see where that takes us to, happy to play with any of this, all of it. We'll just start by polishing on some stuff. But if there's yeah, something specific that. somebody wants to see, we want to hear about it, and that's what we're going to do. And we've got 
every tool in the lineup, too. Yes, so if have... there's a tool or something that you guys are like, hey, I remember seeing how this works with that, let us know. Send a comment to Dane, and we can pull a tool if we need uh, and throw everything on that we need to. But yep, right absolutely. now, today, we're working with the 15. Yeah, we're going to start with 15. I think Troy's got a mini down there because I don't know if we got a close-up shot of the B pillars on this thing, but <laughs> man, are they bad. So yeah. you get the uh, Jimmy Cam in here. We're going to jump We're gonna jump into this thing and just start polishing some areas. I want to see what I can do with this sanding mark on this hood to start. So I'm going to yeah. clear this stuff off and start there. Uh, if you want to grab the mini and maybe start hitting the pillars until we get some questions on, and then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is meant to be a hangout session, so people don't need to feel rushed, right? Yeah. Drop in your question at any time, and we'll be able to pause and take a moment to answer your question and get back to it. It's, it's meant to be fun it's meant to be interactive yeah yep, exactly that's the whole idea for our section today so um so i'm gonna move this stuff off if you want to grab a pad and then we're gonna get to work and then uh dane just go ahead and jump in anytime you have some questions yeah and, uh, there we go we'll you go bet there. guys cool cool yeah we're excited to see um so what how do you want to leave out how good this i'm gonna start look. with uh well, you went, this guy right here, here. Okay, yeah the rest can take it. off okay. and the troy i think is going to do some uh course and a wool? fine and yeah, some yellow wool some da fine and yellow wool just see what it does on that truck over there but so this hood was sanded down. Uh, we did 3,000 grit. Seemed like it was pretty hard paint. We had to hit it a few times. So it's been sanded at 3,000. This was the junkyard hood that we recently picked up. And uh, we're making up stuff as we go, aren't we? <laughs> <Is that> <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charlie Hutton. What's going on, my friend? How are you, man? So our special surprise guest, <laughs> Charlie Hutton. Uh, so I know who you are. A lot of people know who you are. But there's some detailing people in the eyes that may not know who you are. So give us a little. Who is Charlie Hutton and what do you do? Oh, Mr. man, I'm, I, I'm an unemployed uh, body <laughs> and paint guy just looking for something to do. Came by to bust some And, paint, and right? I did. That's right. Yeah. No, I heard there was like free ice cream and stuff here. Yeah, that's after, like, the, after the segment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah so. No, this but, Charlie does not need much introduction to anybody who's been around custom cars. This guy has won more awards than you can probably count at this point yeah. for well, painting cars. We've been very blessed to be a part of some good teams. Yeah. You know, and, and it's kind of funny because, I mean, with the buffing thing, as you guys were talking about, I just laughed because I've always said, you know, I mean, thank God for sandpaper and a buffer. <laughs> if it wasn't for that, I'd be out of a job, you know what I mean? Because for some reason, when you pull that trigger on the spray gun, it just doesn't always come out it perfect. It doesn't come out how you want it to. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody automatically thinks, it's like, oh, man, this flawless paint job. How'd you, how'd you do that? It's like, sand, a lot of this, buff, and a lot of this. <laughs> That's pretty much exactly. how it happens. Exactly. So, exactly. so yeah, so, I mean, you've won tons of awards. You're known as a paint guy. You obviously do a lot more at your shop. We know that, obviously, yeah. do full restorations, but you're, you're, you kind of make your name in, your, in the paint world, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so we're honored to know you because we kind of found out by accident that you were using our stuff one yeah. day. We're like, yeah. oh, my yeah. God, Charlie Hutton is using Bigfoot polishers <laughs> and compounds? And then we all freaked out. And so um, I was actually just at your shop, what was it, two weeks ago. We were yeah. hanging out, and you are working yeah. on some stuff. And just, you know, I wanted to say thank you, first of all, for letting us see your shop. If you guys haven't seen Charlie's work before, just search him. Google him. Yeah. There's tons of pictures of amazing cars out we, there that we kind of hide in our little hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we won't give out the address. Yeah, we, don't want yeah, we hide. In the place. We hide in our I little think, hole. I do think our things, a year ago we went out there. Dylan and I did to, yeah. to do a little segment with you, and we did the same thing for the rag company. But it was a undisclosed location. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Top yeah. secret. Top yeah. secret. Yeah. Nobody can know. Yeah. Well, well, the thing is, I just used to be out in a field, but now it's grown up around me. So, <laughs> so now I'm not in the middle of the field anymore. Yeah. You got to find a new field somewhere, <laughs> I right? Gotta find, yeah, that's right. So, so you, you are using our stuff in your yes. shop, and so yep. um, we talked about this last week. So you're, I mean, again, high, high level show car finish, yeah. you know, Riddler yeah. Award I mean, winners, that kind of stuff. So. Um, Kind of share with everybody how you came to find the system and 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 how it's kind of getting used in your well, shop now. I mean, the whole thing is, is as a craftsman, you want to get better and better and better, right? I mean, if if you're a driven person, you try to strive to get better at whatever that craft is, you know. And and so for us, I mean, obviously, the most not necessarily the most, but pretty high up the chain is the sanding and polishing aspect of what we do. Because what is that? That is the finished product that people see at the show. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I mean, and, and so you have to have those flawless finishes. So for us, I mean, it was always that. I mean, we were trying every stink and compound you can think of and every buffer. I mean, just trying to achieve that ultimate finish. And then when we put one of these in our hands, it was just that whole idea. And then a lot of it too is the very beginning stage when I found the buffer was it was pre everybody was still using a rotary mm -hmm. right even us yep you know and and using a rotary what do you always deal with the oh, swirl holograms. marks yep. Yep. the holograms you know and so then but that was what we did you know and we always thought it was the buffer the compound this but it, 
and that's exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, that's what it was. Yeah. You know, I mean, and so when you're buffing and, and we were creating our own issues with the rotary buffer and with the different pads we were using. And, and chasing your tail to a degree. Chasing our tail, exactly. You know, I mean, it's kind of like that little puppy dog that just sits there yeah, and chases exactly. and chases. And, and you get so frustrated as a craftsman because you know, I mean, especially on the deadlines that we were under, I mean, you're trying to get a car ready for the show and you're fighting the swirl marks, you're fighting this and that. And, and it just, you get to that point where you're, I mean, you are trying everything. And then when we put your buffer in our hands and we were trying the compounds and it was like, dude, this is, this is awesome. Number one, I could take the rotary and pitch it out. <laughs> now that did not come at first. Yeah. You know, cause in the very beginning, it was just the buffer. You guys didn't really have the pad set up, so the compounds. Yep, yep. The biggest thing, and what I love seeing is this. This was the game changer. That wool pad was the game changer. Yeah. Because initially, we couldn't just put the rotary away. You needed we it for that We still heavy cutter, needed yeah. that initial mm-hmm. cut. Then we would immediately switch to this. But when you came out with that wool pad, we no longer had to cut with a rotary and a wool pad. Mm-hmm. We could use that. So now, we never put a rotary buffer to any of our panels. So we're not creating work for ourselves mm-hmm. because that's right. the whole thing too is, I mean, we would go nuts thinking it's like, man, I've taken this to at that time, 3000 grit. Now, of course, then 3M comes out with 5,000 5, and it goes to 8,000. But I mean, that was the whole idea. We're taking it to 3000 grit. And then as soon as we hit a rotary wool pad on it, we're cutting deeper scratches than, than, than what we had. Yep. Right? So, I mean, just you get to that point. So, yeah, no, so you guys, I mean, it's awesome. I love it. Well, appreciate that. Um, Dane, I don't know if there's any questions in the audience for uh, Charlie. Yes, Yes, uh, there are. You want to lob those out there while we have them? We're not going to tie up his whole day. (laughs) We're not going to make him work. He left (laughs) his his shop. We're not going to make him buff paint. Any excuse to get out of work. He did have to leave just to come here. (laughs) All right, so let's see what we got here in the queue. I set aside a few that I thought might be handy. Okay. Uh, obviously, wanted to throw this one up. Just somebody saying that they recently bought themselves a Mark III, and it was from Alan at AM Details. Nice. Hey, followed wow. up by oh, our good friend Hans, chiming in as always from whoop, the whoop, Netherlands. Emptied her Uno Protect bottle today, ordering three new ones. No, not the small bottles, the leader one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Hans. <laughs> so he's uh, he's a man on a mission. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. Now, Lots of muffin to do. <laughs> We don't have a frequent purchase program uh, yeah. that I'm aware of. So. <laughs> so now here's a question from John Blake. He's asking about water spots and swirls on black paint. The best technique for a beginner car enthusiast to polish them. Well, we don't. I don't think we have any water spots on this thing that we can address yeah. today, but I can give you this much. You can treat it like any other defect. You can polish it out. Um, obviously, you start with your standard things. You're going to clean. You're going to clay and decontaminate that surface. And then you're going to jump to a polish compound, something to try and get it out. Some things are a little bit more stubborn than others. Right. Um, there are dedicated water spot removers out there. I know you have some recommendations yep. on that stuff. Um, but ultimately, you treat it like any other def- defect, especially if it's a uh, if it's it's a etching on paint. More, yeah. you know, it doesn't come off with just a, c- a chemical clean. You've got actual etching on the surface. You got to treat it like it's a scratch. You're going to actually compound and polish that out. Yeah. So. And the biggest thing is to make sure that you don't you don't just go into it with with a polisher and combine, you really do need to remove all those minerals, all the contaminants that are on that surface, so that way you know. Yeah, don't buff know. dirty paint. Yeah, because <laughs> otherwise they're going to come back. If you didn't, if you missed the chemical spot, you're going to not, you're not going to, it's not going to do anything. You'll disappear <laughs> for half a second before the back. clear shrinks back, and then you're going to have them. So. Well, cool. Um, I'm going to start polishing on Go this. Go for it, Charlie. If you want yeah. to critique our technique, um, or I'll if make you want to like polish anything, long. this would be great. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, if I had that? something painted at my shop, we could have done this there. I know, <laughs> Why right? don't we just do Get that? Free buffing. I'm <laughs> yeah. liking it. Yeah. <laughs> so like I mentioned, I'm going to start with the blue wool, Charlie's favorite pad, apparently, yeah. and our course. And I'm going after this semi-hard paint um, with a 3,000 grit sand mark we put in with, actually used the 15 earlier to put it in. So it's uh, fairly consistently sanded. For those uh, of you at home wondering, this is a Dodge Grand Caravan hood. Yes. From so before Dylan turns that machine on, I do have a question for him here from Troy Preston. Oh. Okay, yeah. He wants to know, hey, Dylan, how did the new DA pads differ from the older Bigfoot pads? Ah, good question. So, uh, Levi, could you yeah, grab me one one, just any one of those and we'll open it up? Sure thing. And then when you finish that, I got one about cleaning pads after that. So. Okay, well, so we will open a freshie here. Get that guy. 
So I'll hold this up so the camera can kind of see here, hopefully. But the contour edge is kind of the big, the big thing here. We changed the profile; they're a little bit shorter height, all the way around. These pads are designed to work on any of the orbital tools as well as the gear driven. So it's it's random orbital or gear driven pads. You can use it on the melee. You can use it on the 21. You can use it on the 15. Um, this contour design actually helps promote rotation. So um, if you came into an area like in a deep curve where you would have previously seen a little bit of pad stall, this profile is actually going to help that. Um, along with the reduced height. With the blue and the white pads, they're completely new materials, so all new foam structures. The yellow is the same as the previous generation in terms of the material, um, but we changed the color a little bit, and again, the profile changes. But um, that's it in a nutshell. They come in the, uh, the flow pack now, so those are completely UV protected, moisture protected. They ship to you. Um, if you're a detailer who buys a lot of pads at once, you can leave them in that. They won't degrade at all. Uh, a lot of a lot of other manufacturers will package in clear packaging. We're doing these completely sealed foil packages to keep the foam pretty much pristine until you're ready to use it. So that's it in a nutshell. I'll leave this one up here. We'll probably okay. use that. Okay. Then I had one more for you about uh, how you know when to change or clean your pad. Ah, so that's a, and clean. Yeah, that's mm. that's a, the million dollar question. So the the easiest indication is when the performance drops off. Um, in terms Makes of on, uh, on the fly cleaning, you want to do it as often as you can. So blowing out with compressed air, vacuuming the pad. Um, the more often you do that, the better. A clean pad always performs better. It's just there's no argument to that. Whatsoever. And I'm going to just jump in on that, too, yeah. because, I mean, what you have to understand is what are you doing as you're buffing? You're removing product. Yep. Where is that product going? It's embedding itself into the pad. Yep. So it's very crucial to clean the pad yep. because all that paint is building up so you need to clean it. Mm -hmm. So then that way you got optimum performance out of the pad at all exactly. times. Yeah, and then oftentimes, a lot of people don't understand this, is the, the chunks, you know, if you, if you think of the clear coat that's being removed as chunks, you know, flakes of paint, yep. they are oftentimes larger than the abrasive in the compound itself. So you have this stuff floating around in the slurry of compound on that pad that's got a bigger abrasive aspect to it than the actual abrasive in the compound. So it's introducing its own marks. Yep. So typically, if somebody sees hazing on a finish or they're not getting a really clean finish out of things, it's usually a pad cleaning issue. So it goes back to that clean as often as you possibly can. Um, it, it, it's going to vary from car to car. Very soft paint, it's going to need it almost every single pass. Harder paint, you could probably get away two, three panels before it's completely necessary. It just kind of depends on the specific paint. You can't clean too often. I guess yeah, that's probably the exactly, best advice yeah. I can give. At the end of the job, um, you know, we've got videos on our channel. You can machine wash pads, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's tons of ways to clean them. But on the job, while you're working, definitely compressed air, or if not, a vacuum. And if not that, then a brush, something, yeah. something to dislodge that residue out of the pad. Well, and that's one of the things that we talk about is, is a lot of people think, and I know Charlie is not a one pad man on a car. You nope. use a ton, a ton of pads. Of pads. Yep. Yep. And there are a lot of detailers and a lot of folks that can't believe when Dylan and I talk, you need to have more than one pad. Yeah. And they're like, wait, you use more than one pad yeah. on an entire car? It's like, yes, we ask at a minimum four to six. Yeah. Like at yeah. a minimum, it's not like, a, it's not a scheme to sell more pads. We promise, because all your pads will last longer if you yeah. have more of you, them. Yep. You'll go through them less quickly. You'll have more, but they'll. It's kind of the they're, you know mini hands make light like, work yeah. kind of yeah. thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And if they a pad does get saturated, the heat goes up. All these things are happening. So the longer you push it, the more that pad's being broken down. If you can stop after a couple of panels and swap to a fresh one. That pad never gets completely stressed out. It's not going to start delaminating. You're not going to see foam degradation. You're not going to see fiber degradation. All these things that can happen as a pad gets heated up, loaded, all the friction and things. So the more pads you can use, the better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great point, both of you guys. Uh, does that answer adequately, Dane? I believe so. I had a couple here for Charlie, if he's willing oh, to nice. chime in on these. Oh, hey, you bet. I'll make up something. <laughs> all right. You go for it. So here we've got a question. Any tips? I'll put it up on the screen here. Any tips for photosensitive paint preservation like SEM lemonade? Ooh, I don't even know. Oh, I don't even know. Yeah, that's a good okay. one. Okay. <laughs> I'll and make I up something. about that because it's definitely yeah, not something I'm I'll just start blowing smoke with. if you want me. SEM <laughs> <laughs> yeah. S -S lemonade. S -S for, for lemonade. lemonade yeah. I'm, not pr I'm not familiar with that one. I so that maybe one he can follow up and leave us a comment maybe clarifying what uh, yeah. he's specifically yeah. talking about there. But here's the other one for Charlie. Uh, we have BB Detailing just wanting to know what paint system, i.e. brand, uh, Charlie's using at the shop. Um, we use PPG. Paint. Okay. We use, so, yeah. But like I've always told people, uh, paint's paint. It all buffs. Yep. So, you know. It's more about knowing it, the it's, chemical It's knowing, it. yeah. It's just knowing the... The biggest mistake most people make is we have a tendency to become bench chemists. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It, there, there, there's well, a the guideline. Do it. <laughs> yeah, the well, details are doing it too. It's not it's, just the painters. But seriously though, it's like I mean, you know, there's mixed ratios and and there's there's steps that you're supposed to follow and and unfortunately we're human and we have a tendency to uh, make up our own rules as we go sometimes. So we do our own mixed ratios, but uh, we've had very good success with all the brands. But uh, PPG is what uh, we've really, really liked the support that we get from them. Um, a lot of it, um, it, it's just the whole idea of somebody understanding our end of the world. Mm -hmm. It's not the collision repair side. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the glamour side. It's the fun side of it. Yeah, you know, well, and, and for them to understand where we're coming from on that part of it, it makes a big difference. And the training yeah. piece, too. I know yeah. it's big for you, like it's it is for us, which is part. why we work with PPG as much as we do, is yep. they're into education, just like you guys are. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's been mentioned multiple times already today in the, in the earlier session is that education is important. If you can teach it, people how to use a product, it doesn't matter if it's the best product. They need to know how to use it properly. Exactly. You know, and that's, yeah. that's yep. so key. Education Absolutely. is... is the best sales tool any any company can have, and yeah. I think PPG kind of falls in line with all of us in that thinking that they're going to yep. train people on how to use their stuff. Right. No. Oh, excellent points. And uh, here, this one's for Dylan. I'll throw it up on the screen here. Just a nice little comment from our own Ricky Colon here, saying, "Can I say I was pleasantly surprised with the cinnamon, almost dentine-like scent in the DA Course Compound? I love it." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's hey. good. Good. <laughs> we, we made the right set. Yeah. So that <laughs> works. Kind of. Dude, I've said <laughs> that. Cinnamony. Yeah. I've said that forever. <laughs> they need to flavor and scent the compounds. Yeah. 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 Maybe yeah. not flavor them the because compounds. then you can <laughs> eat a little taste. Yeah. Scent, don't eat the compounds, you need ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Scenting the oh. compound. Hey, you never know. If it's I got it. You know, you could do a little uh, clean up on the teeth. <laughs> That's well. true. Right. Uh, right. right. Yeah. Cut and polish on that. <laughs> now, I'm going to share one more question here with you, and then I'll let you guys get to work, and then I can pop some other stuff on the screen to people who just want to say nice things about you, because I Aww. figured that's always nice. Oh. But uh, the question we've got here is from Broham73. If you don't have an air compressor, what's the best way to clean the pad while polishing? vacuum cleaner and that's something that a lot of people don't think of get yourself a don't use the same crevice tool that you use to vacuum the cheerios out from under the minivan <laughs> seat bad idea get a separate crevice tool but actually just vacuuming it um you use the crevice tool to agitate like on a fiber pad um it's compressed air is the most effective because there's just so much more velocity it's going to push all that junk out but the the close second is vacuuming it because you're going to at least break it up. You're going to suck it out and get it out of that pad. And the more of that residue you can remove, the better the, the and a brush is going to be. Too. Yeah, and a brush, brush, yeah. You can use a brush like I was actually just using our claw pad tool here to agitate and get those chunks kind of broken up. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, guys, go ahead, get to work, do your right. thing, and uh, I'll throw some stuff on the screen as we go. Interrupt as we're going, yeah. Okay, nice. All right. So, like I said, we are going blue, blue wool right. and coarse compound here, and I am going to see what we can get out of this very rough junkyard hood. Yeah, I came in handy. Yeah? He's, he's just here to hold the panel. <laughs> Uh, junkyard takeoff. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, we went around across the street last uh, a couple weeks ago when Dylan was here and went and grabbed it off of that minivan across oh, the street. There you yeah. Go. Perfect. Perfect. Let's see what it is. See if I know what I'm doing. Everything looks good behind the camera. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think if you get on close, I'll edit that out. So. <laughs> well, oh, oh. You can see yourself in it, so yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, the sanding mark's gone. No, that's good. Well, Jimmy, you okay. Get in on here. And, uh, we'll do a follow-up, but that's. I mean, that's. It's good enough for union work. We can pull that comment up the screen momentarily so you can see a little better. There we there go. So, what I'm going to do, 
I'm not going to make you hold that compound all day. I'll take it from you. I'm going to switch okay. over. And I'm going to jump, I think, to pure. Oh, Get some surprise very nice. There you go. Here. <laughs> Excited about that. So blue pad cut, and then now you're going to ultrafine it and using I'm pure. I'm going to jump because that, that is so clear. I just want to see what I'm going to oh, get shit. out yeah. of gloss from the white setup. We could go yellow, but yeah. let's see what white will do. And this is, I mean, this is feasible. If you get to that, I mean, that's, I'm... I mean, I, I'm really impressed the way this this clear because we did this in another video where we were playing on this, and I mean, it it likes finished that it out really well. Yeah, it, it likes really this pad, color. this paint. Let's see if we can get another notch on the gloss scale here, though. So, for those who don't know how to prime our new foams, we're recommending an X like that now. I'll actually, hand that to you. Oh, so hold on. This. I'm gonna go over here and prime up over oh, here. Okay. <laughs> Turn it on. Sorry. All right. Let's see what we get here. Now, while Dylan's doing that, I'm not sure the other guys can hear me, but I do want to get back to, uh, okay, I want to get back to uh, Peter's question here. Okay. Where he was kind of filling in, remember, I mentioned that lemonade paint. So what he's saying is SEM is a USA-made candy concentrate added to clear. It's translucent, and it suffers from UV. Hmm. Candy concentrate added to clear. <laughs> yeah. Because say what candies are, they're a dye. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, PPG makes them, House of Color makes it, and it's yeah. an additive that you add. That's how you get, it's like the, the Kool-Aid appearance. Yeah. The only problem is, is, obviously, in clear coat, that's why it's so crucial to have plenty of good clear. Never use a cheap clear doing a candy job. Just because the reason why clears get expensive is because of the UV screeners that's put into the clear coat. Right. So you have a, a dye that's suspended. Mm -hmm and you have all those UV rays burning through, they will milk up, so you, That's they like die candy back. Candy, yeah, they, old they candy bleach paints out will all bleach, candy, yeah. yeah, they go bad in okay. a hurry. Gotcha, okay. So what so was I don't, the specific what, question that he had about that name? Now that we understand what yeah, he's talking about. Yeah, no, that actually helps a lot, I think. Basically, he was just saying that it's particularly, uh, you know, weak when, you know, put up against UV. So yeah. Yeah. it's translucent and it suffers from UV. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so and, and, and a lot of times if you see a problem, if you have a, a true candy job that's starting to fade out, buffing it ain't going to do you any good. Yeah, yeah. it's under. I mean, actually. because it's underneath, you yeah. know, and what has happened is it's just getting bleached out by the UV rays. Gotcha. Okay. So it's, it's killing the dye so that you're not going to bring it back by buffing. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. okay. So basically you want to have a product over the top of it that has UV inhibitors. Yes, exactly. Strong. Yeah. yeah. A good a good clear coat, not an off brand clear right. coat. Stick yeah. with a good brand clear coat. So how's excellent that advice. Coffee, huh? Nice. So, I, I think that did I dig it. it up a notch. I know we have hardcore viewers who are just like, show me in like, you know, super, super detail shot. I think this gives a pretty good look at it though. I think that's pretty detailed that's, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah. No, it looks good. So one I thing I do want to deeper. show though is I'm gonna get because this is a question that comes up fairly often. So pure, what makes it unique in the line, the reason we call it pure is because it's no filler, pure. We want, there's no intentional filling right. in this product whatsoever. So we should say every product is going to fill to some degree or another, whether you intend it to or not, because the oils that are in it and that right. kind of stuff, yeah. the stuff that's left behind. What you can do is what we've done is formulate the products to produce as true a finish as possible. So minimize the amount of fillers. So we're producing mechanical gloss with that. The abrasives are doing the work. We're not using oils and, and that kind of stuff. To fill yeah. it. So uh, good old panel wipe here, which uh, is about the strongest thing known to man for removing uh, polishing oils. We call it true. Definitely is. There you go. That's right. So what we can do in this scenario is wipe this panel, and none of those defects are going to come back. There's no drop back. There's no 
fillers, nothing that was hiding anything. So the gloss that you get out of pure and coarse and DA fine for that for that matter are true. It's a true finish. It's not mm -hmm. a well, it looks good until I panel wipe it, and then it goes backwards, and I got to try and fix that. We're getting as close. It's going to have a small, small percentage of drop back just because we're removing it's, those polishing oils. Yeah. But, I mean, significantly glossier. Yeah, that's that pretty step. crazy. So, yeah. How are we doing over there on the uh, really well? How's it going? <laughs> it's really like in yellow wool with DA5. Cool. Well, uh, let's uh, nice. I'm gonna let you keep, let Jim, follow him. Let's see what he's doing because I'm uh, <laughs> Jimmy, get on there. <laughs> so I didn't do a good job of leaving a good half and half, but you can see what we kind of started with down here around these door handles. Oh, since this scratch pattern was continued all the way up that. Yeah, get the light out. It's nice and gnarly. So a little bit of a pad mark there, but it cleaned up all the defects. But this will give you an idea of where we started. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> So, uh, John is not kind to his truck. We can, we've well, <laughs> well no, in fairness, no. he's only had it a very he's short while. He's only had it a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it was his uncle's truck prior. We could blame somebody else. He bought it right? from yeah. him. Somebody else's problem. Yeah. yeah. He I was suspect like, his uncle rough. used it like a truck. <laughs> yeah, his <laughs> uncle like did use it like a truck. <laughs> uh, so. Now, I do have a bevy of comments and stuff here. I just want to make sure we stay on top of these, if you guys are all right with that. Yeah, of yeah. course. Okay. So Dino here, he's a regular. He's got some questions, looks like, for Charlie. I'll pop that up on the screen okay. here. He's asking, uh, hello, people, big hellos from Austria. Nice. Could Charlie say a few things about HS, UHS, and ceramic clear coats, hardness against mechanical damage? Um, with the ceramic clears, um, the biggest thing is with the, the ceramic clears, we've done a lot of testing because obviously with a good friend of mine, Paul Stoll, paints a lot of nitro funny cars and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and the biggest thing with the nitro or with the ceramic clears is just how hard they are. Mm -hmm. You know, one misconception, a lot of people think of the, the way we call it, you know, mar resistant. You know, the harder the paint is, the more mar resistant it is. Mm -hmm. Softer the clear coat, the more it's going to scratch right you know and so with a lot of it i mean the new coatings i know i'm not real familiar with a lot of the new coatings i mean i know the old where they would almost impregnate it with the hot buffing and that kind of stuff yeah. i don't the ceramic coating that they would put on but they actually now have ceramic clear coats mm -hmm. where the ceramic it's just like a silicon base that actually just it's all the way through the clear yeah so it's just not a surface layer mm -hmm. those as far as durability are just by far they're just phenomenal they're Hard to buff, yeah. Yeah. obviously. Right. Yeah, and Extremely then when you do hard get a defect, buff. they're very hard and to get when the you, defects Yes, out, yeah. and so that's the only drawback is when you do have the defect, that they are harder to buff. Right. So a lot of the times, if, if you want that hard, I mean, the trick that we use, I mean, now granted, this isn't going to be for everybody, um, is a lot of times we will do a job, we'll clear coat it, then we'll wet sand it, sand it flat with, say, 800 grit, then we re-clear with ceramic clear. Oh. So then you have less. Obviously, anytime you do a recoat or a re, you know flow coat on a clear coat, right? It's going to lay out so much smoother, and you're going to have less imperfections. So at that point, you're not going to have near as many issues to deal with by doing a flow coat with ceramic versus trying to use a ceramic clear all the way through. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes perfect sense. No, oh, thank you very much. Good. Um, so here's a few more for you guys. I've got detailed dude. Okay, there we go. Coming up on screen, I've got a Bigfoot LHR-15 Mark II. Love it. I've been thinking about getting a 21 or a Miele. Which one would be better in your opinion? Yeah, opinion. Dylan. <laughs> opinion. In my opinion? Um, yes. My opinion says. No, uh, it's hard to answer without knowing specifically what type of vehicle you work on. But if you have a 15 already, yeah, I can make an argument for either one of them. My argument for the 21 would be if you do anything bigger. So if you do a lot of Dodge Ram pickups... Anthony, looking at you. Um, <laughs> if you do larger vehicles, big square well, things like, like pickup the, trucks, or that you've yeah. got stuff. There's got a lot of areas one. where a 21 would do really well in that. You do boats, you do RVs, you do that kind of stuff. If you don't, if you're primarily on sedans and various cars, a melee might be a better option. That gear-driven movement, you can edge with it. Uh, you can get more aggressive with it. It's and easier to train on. It's easier train to train, train on exactly. On so there's a lot of employee. reasons to get either one of them. Um, Variety is kind of the spice of life. I think I'm going to try and steer you maybe more towards the melee because then you've got a random orbital and a gear-driven orbital. Um, but again, it comes down to a little bit more on what you're doing specifically, I think. Yeah. Oh, fair points. Right. And uh, this one, actually, I'm going to direct kind of to all of you. You can kind of have a discussion about it because I know everybody's got their preference. But 
Joey here is asking, question for TRC, using towels over time, when do you know it's time to throw away your microfiber towels or just replace them? They're all single use. Just throw them away after. <laughs> well, uh, if it all, ever hits I mean, the ground, <laughs> pitch it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the salesman in me says that. Uh, but no, it, it's really about a, a, it's how you care for them. If you're caring for them properly, if you're taking care of your towels, you're washing them properly, and you're utilizing the right uh, temperatures, the right soaps, the right, I mean, it's just, it's care. You're, if you're doing all the right steps, they'll last you mm -hmm. now in a high volume shop or a heavy you know body shop or detail shop like you're just gonna you're gonna have to swap them out it's gonna have it's it's gonna happen regardless of how well you care for it because you could drop it you could be talking you wipe a panel and you throw it in your back pocket and you answer a phone call and you talk to somebody and and you don't even realize and you leave it sitting down somewhere or it falls off or whatever it's it's gonna happen and so one of the big things that that we recommend is just proper care Keep an eye on them, wash them. But if you have to replace them, hey, new towel day is like it's, the best thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> new towel day. Yeah. It's my favorite well, day. It's one of my favorite days of the year. Yeah. I mean, our, that's the rule in our shop. I mean, if you drop a microfiber, it's done. Mm -hmm. But what we'll do is just take the Sharpie, you exit. Yeah. And then we use that towel to wipe up, clean up parts. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Not wiping Perfect. down a freshly painted buff. Yeah. Surface. And, it, and so it, you can still get the yeah, use paint jobs worth a little bit more yeah. than but the it towel, just, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, and I talk about it as a cost per use. You yeah, know, some people go like, "Oh man, that's a that's that will take that creature that you're using. That's a two dollar and fifty cent towel. I can't do that." Well, if you've got you know five six uses on paint with it, and then you've got another maybe ten parts, you know, as yeah. protection areas that maybe you've taped so that people don't hurt. Those are more jobs for that towel, bringing that price per yep. use down. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Yep. and the, the the towels are cheaper than any of the surfaces you're going to use them on. So, and it's and it's nicer <laughs> to use a better towel than to redo the work. It's exactly. exactly. Yeah. You mess it yeah. up. Yeah, your labor well, is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and like oh, you I love said, you just more. <laughs> you just kind of rotate the towels down. Yeah. Yep. You know, I mean, you step it down. Okay, now it actually. Okay, here's my. I'm cleaning the surface, doing that. Now, okay. It's wore out. Now I can use it to clean other stuff. I'm still yeah. getting some more life out of it. Yeah, you rotate them through. Yeah, have a useful yeah. life for all of them, and then send them off to the yeah. pasture to stud. I don't yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't be strip. cheap with it. Yeah, that's right. I mean? Yeah, because nice. when you're when you're trying to save a buck, it bites you in the butt. Yeah, yeah. it does. I Always mean, does. bottom line. I mean, you got that that towel, and you've been using it forever and ever and ever. And say you do accidentally drop it, you shake it out. I'm going to wash it. It's going to be fine. Yeah, exactly. But it's not. I mean, it's just not worth the headache. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? At that point, I mean, what's two dollars and fifty cents? Yeah. Don't yep, buy your yep. cup of coffee that day. You know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. seriously, you're gonna blow it on something. Yeah. So, exactly. You know? And if you're very prideful in what you do, I mean, that's. I mean, you want the. We well, want your work best. to stand out. Exactly. And show off. You know? And I that's mean, the goal. Yeah. Yep. Well, and I got another one here for you oh. from Andre asking: Can powder coated surfaces be buffed and corrected? Yes, um, they're just ex they're really hard, so yeah. you got to get really aggressive with them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they polish just like paint or anything else. Yeah. Any other surface, you can polish almost anything. It's, yeah, <laughs> I mean powder coated paint <laughs> is paint. Yeah, you know, I mean it's just it's obviously powder. Yeah. You know, that's baked on. So anytime yeah. it's it's baked on, it's just it's it's a lot harder. Yeah. You know, but yes, you can do it. We've done it before. But you yeah. just set your expectations. A little more elbow grease. Yeah. yeah. Set your expectations reasonably. If it's a pretty significant defect you're going after, you're gonna have to ratchet up the aggressive level. You're probably yeah. gonna have to hit it more than once versus if that same defect was in a painted panel. Well yeah, like these wheels have powder coating on them and yeah. uh, that lip is black powder coat and if you polished them, they're gonna get shinier. Yeah. They're probably not going to be as even of a finish because you don't have yep. everything right there to make that work properly. Yep, yep. But you'll have some shiny spots for shiny sure. Spots. <laughs> okay. Cool. And uh, Jose here just had some consumer advice, it looks like. <laughs> if you're not sure what buffer, uh, do what I do and just buy all of them. Hey, perfect there you go. idea. You know what? Uh, <laughs> checks in the mail. Uh, thanks for that. <laughs> so, yes. No, one, at least two of all of them is yeah. kind of where I go with it. So. Um, <laughs> We could do the, the TRC wall of polishers. So oh, we, sure, yeah, right. of course. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chris Wallman just popped in, made sure he said nice. hi, and uh, hey, said nice Chris. job today. Thanks, Thank Chris. You, Chris. Thank you. All right. Now, I do have a lot of questions here, but I want to give you guys a chance to keep moving along. So cool. go ahead and keep doing your thing, and I'll throw these maybe to Charlie or Levi, and we can kind of follow up from there. Cool. All right. Do you want to buff on anything? I don't want to steal. I don't want to take the polish out of your hand. Oh, no, man. You're doing awesome. Okay, I'm here to learn, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I did like the question about between the 15 and like the 21. Yeah. 
because that's always the thing. It's like, okay, where should you be using what? So. I, yeah, and it's probably one of the more common ones we get. It's yeah. The, well, and it's I, in the little tighter areas too. You know, the 15 works a little bit better when you're trying to get in those recesses and some fit, of those smaller spots. So. I tend to grab the 15 more because I work on such a wide variety of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I'm, if I'm, if I got, oops, sorry, if I've got wide open spaces, yeah, 21 all day because I'm covering a lot of a lot of real estate in a hurry. Yeah, oh, yeah. might as well just keep making this uh, this mini up, and make a million bucks, right? Up. Coming along nicely. Yeah. Now, I got a question here for Charlie. He's liking it. Do you want me to kill the buffer today, Dane, so, you, so we can talk? Yeah, just for a moment here. I got yeah. Peter here asking Charlie when he's coming to Australia next post-COVID. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, it doesn't <laughs> look like very it. soon. <laughs> um, I actually just talked to some good friends of mine um, over the weekend down there, and they're acting like the Australian government's not allowing any international travel till the end of 21, if not until 22. Oh, oh my gosh. So wow. it's like, yeah. It's it may close. be a while. Yeah. So it sucks because I'm missing all my good mates down there. <laughs> you know, because I was going so often. Yeah. That it was like, you know, it's like my second home. Oh. You know what I mean? And, and unbelievable craftsmen there, man. Oh, they're crazy yeah. there, it's, it's, man. They oh, are hard Extremely nuts. talented. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. You know, down there, it's, it's like, how you going? How you going? How you going? And it's funny because uh, my wife and I, we were over at Yellowstone this year, and she was like, how you going? She just started laughing at me. Like, yeah, it's yeah, awesome. I'm ready to go back. Yeah, we were going to go down this year. That was one of our, it was on our list mm -hmm. of travel trips, or next year is what it was. And Jeff and Carolyn were going to do a trip themselves this year, but... Yeah. Yeah, we're uh, we're Next super year. bummed, but we've got uh, yeah, we've got our friends at Rag Company Europe down or Rag Company Australia down there, and then uh, TRC Rag Company super fan himself, Mr. Greg Maskell of Maskell's Customs, yeah. is uh, <laughs> a yeah. big big fan of the Rag Company yeah. towels and products. I uh, I love what this uh, combo does on the I think it's amazing. I'm still blown away. Well, it's nice because you were able to kind of step that one step. Yeah, if, I, if you want it. It's oh, there, yeah, right? you, you could know, be done with it. Yeah, you could be uh, done with that. Yeah. Why not? Maybe we did white on the other side. That. Let's go yellow. Let's there see. Go. There you go. This is playtime. <laughs> you want okay, to well, while you guys are setting that up, <laughs> I got Umberto here asking, what do they recommend for vehicles that had paint with clear coat embedded? Well, you got hot there, Dane. What would you say? Uh, Humberto was asking, what do they recommend for vehicles that had paint with clear coat embedded? Clear coat embedded? I don't understand uh, what I'm wondering uh, I think he's like, like single stage. I think it's, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I I imagine what he's, yeah, with single stage. Okay. Um, yeah, okay treat it the yeah. same. It's the same thing. Yeah. Just treat it the same. What it is, is what you'll notice on a lot of uh, single stage paint jobs, straight up single stage can be a little harder to buff than, say, clear coat. So by intermixing and, and putting clear with your single stage, it actually makes it buff a little easier. Mm, okay. And it actually gives, like for me, it's like black. Yeah. I will not do a black paint job unless it's single stage. Yeah. There's nothing blacker than black than it's a true. single it's stage a, paint job. Anytime black. you put a clear over top of that, it kind of mutes it. Yeah. But what we do is I will mix black, clear, mix them 50-50. Uh. Now. So you're tinting. Be basically. careful with how you, you have to make sure that your clear coat and your single stage use the exact same hardener. You can't just grab, hey, this clear coat, I'm going to mix this, and hey, that's where the bench, the bench chemist, chemist comes in. <laughs> yeah. So people that are doing that, just make sure that, you know, like, you know, just, I'll mention PPG because I use them. In their concept line, the concept single stage and the 2021 clear, 2042 clears, they use the exact same activator and reducers. Oh, okay. So okay. make sure 
if you're going to do a cocktail like that, you got to make sure that you're using players and, and single stages that, that go together. But as far as doing it, dude, that's the best way to go. Yeah. It makes the buffing process on a single stage awesome. And the black is black, right? And it's just, yeah, it's and then you still black. have that black. So, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like solid reds, yellows, all of that. You do that very often? Is that a oh, yeah, anytime I do, basically any solid color I do, it's single stage. Okay. It's very rare if I do it, if, if I can't do it in a single stage, then obviously I'll, you know, say if I can't get the formula, or if, yeah. you know, if we're under the gun and I can't just sit there and mix it till I match kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, most solid colors are single stage. That's but right. I mix That's it 50-50 cool. with clear. Yeah. We and what did... I do is I always do two coats of solid color followed up by three coats of a 50-50 mix. And that's, then that's oh, where that's you have nice. to, <laughs> yeah, well, I see. You have plenty of material to work right. with, but then you also have to be careful because then you, you have plenty with the three coats of a mix that you're not going to burn through into the solid color. Yeah. You know, but by going solid color first, you're going to get quicker coverage. Yeah. So now you've got a panel that's completely coated, whether it's red, black, or whatever. Now you go over with those, with that 50-50 mix with clear. Wow. He's kind of good at this stuff. He is. He I, is. Here are some things about your paintwork. Here it's solid. Well, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Sandpaper to buffer, man. <laughs> Thanks now to I you guys. I got one here for Charlie good. before Dylan starts the machine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go for From it. From Alberto here Ask. well, actually, just saying. Tell Charlie that Todd and Alberto say hi from Orlando, Florida, and that flip flops. Oh, 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 yeah. 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 Todd and Alberto from Rupus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Todd and can't have the Rupus guys see in the comments. Come and, on. Yep. Yeah. And I'm missing. I'm missing going to see them too. So. Hey, yeah. Well, hopefully the beginning of the year we'll see what happens. Yeah. We're trying to get something scheduled for for there for a class. So. I mean, I wonder if there's any questions. If we, we do have a class, them. we'll have them down for sure. I yeah. About that. I wonder if they have any questions. I'm sure Todd has. Yeah. Does Todd need me to coach him through? I know Todd has some questions. Todd has taught me how to buff. By the way, <laughs> yeah. I love that. that. Yeah, yeah no, you will love, love that. <laughs> he'll buy me a beer when I get there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's really all you're doing, right? <laughs> now I got a question here for Levi while Dylan's yeah. doing that. Uh, let me pull it up here. It's from Dayton Detailing. He's okay. asking, how does Micro Restore do better than a free and clear detergent? Where does it get an edge? So he's asking about microfiber detergents. So, uh, so difference between Micro Restore and a free and clear fabric detergent. Yeah, for your like clothes. a standard free and clear. So the difference is uh, Micro Restore does have more of that all-purpose cleaner kind of designation. So it's a different level of surfactants that are in it compared to like your normal home fabric softener. Your home fabric softener is designed to uh, be able to utilize, uh, to remove dirt, soils, that kind of stuff. When you have your microfiber towels, you're picking up compounds, you're picking up polishes, and you're picking up- A little bit up, different than a spaghetti it's, stain. It's different than a spaghetti stain, yeah. exactly. So that's why one of the things that I always recommend is utilizing vinegar using that distilled white vinegar as a rinse step and using it as a rinse aid basically by putting it in the bleach port because the acidity in that helps break a lot of that stuff up that the fabric softener, the free and clear didn't get. Now, free and clear is just fine as long as you're using, as long as you're utilizing that uh, acid in the vinegar to break that. But Free, you know, the, the Micro Restore is a great product. It's been around for a really long time, and it is, uh, it is kind of, you know, been the industry standard for microfiber mm -hmm. detergents. So, Good info. That. That's super cool. We've been working on a, on a, a lot of different variations because uh, with the advent of sealants, with ceramic coatings, with a lot of stuff, the problem is towels are getting sealed. And so we've found it's, that Micro yeah. Restore is having a problem trying to break that now because it's always worked well, but it's not strong enough. And so again, that's why we say, hey, if you increase that acidity, you put that, the vinegar in as that on top of MicroStore, it will help break uh, those sealants and things that do s seal themselves yeah. into your fabrics, into your towels. Yeah, we've, so. we've been, you know, everybody's been advancing protection technology and things getting more durable, but the detergents haven't well, caught up, right? Well, and it's so just it's, like it's the machine. Here. It's just like when the very first Rupes came out, the pads that we had weren't designed they for weren't. this machine. And I remember just destroying pads mm -hmm. like crazy. They'd heat up too fast, they'd rip apart, they'd destroy because the technology hadn't, like the polishing technology had arrived, 
with the pads. But the nice. pads, the compounds, the polishes, all that stuff hadn't gotten there yet. It's the same really way with the sealants and microfiber. Yeah, it's the it's the genesis of why we have pads and compounds. It really was. There there was nothing that supported our tool. So we, Todd, who commented, Todd, your buddy yeah. Todd, your your, uh, your his tutor, his teacher, his teacher, yeah, teacher. My tutor. Uh, he he makes a great analogy. It's like you built a you built a better race car, right? You you bought a Camaro off the lot, brand new, and you throw a supercharger on it, and it goes to the track and it blows the transmission up. Well, you got to go buy a race transmission. Then you take it back and you blow the rear end up. So you got to go buy the rear end. It's, we built a better tool, but then all the things that go with it have to support it. And that's, that's the mentality. A lot of people think that we started making pads and compounds just as kind of like a, well, you know, like, make a little you know, extra money, you know, yeah. at the time, on nothing side. existed. Nothing did, yeah. the, the, the market has caught up. Yeah. Obviously other pad manufacturers have caught up and they, because they were having their pads shredded by our tool. And they're going, what the heck is going on? So there's many choices now, but the reason we are in the patent compound business is exactly what you said. There was nothing that supported the tool at the time, and what good is a tool if it shreds every pad you own, right? Yep. Cool. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So there's a lot of different things. Now, one of the big things with those towels is uh, depending on the clear coat, depending on what you're working with, and depending on making sure that you're not contaminating that towel, my two favorite go-tos, the, the Edgeless 365 compound and polish removal. If I'm going for something that's going to be a softer, softer clear, like so soft, if you breathe on it, you scratch it, I'm going to move over towards the Eagle lineup, so the Eagle 350 or Eagle 500s. The 350 is the GSM, the grams per square meter density of the fiber, and then the 500 is the increase of that. So you've got two different weights, so to speak, of a towel. So 350, 500. If you need to increase the density, you bump up to that 500. We even have a 600, and we do have the Everest uh, 1100. So the more that you increase that towel, the less chance you have to incur pressure points, pressure marks, which then cause that marring and stuff like that. So I always recommend 365, uh, Edgeless 365, or the Eagle Everest lineup because of the, the design of those towels. So I know uh, we've given uh, a lot of different shops, a lot of different professional painters, love using 365s or uh, Eagle 350s as their main towels. And we really developed the Eagle 350 to be a detailer's towel, so. Excellent. Now I got another one you can answer here, Levi. Okay. I'm putting it up on the screen here. So basically we've got Ilua Cuz. Does light clay bar scratch your car? Seem people yes. just clay it and put a protection without any correction. I know that's a controversial subject for some people. So if you're using like something like the, uh, TRC Ultra Clay Towel, the Rag Company Ultra Clay Towel, it is a very fine grade clay on the surface of that towel. When used with the proper lubricant and no pressure, you will not mar the surface of that finish. However, if you apply pressure to the surface with your hand, with your forearm, you can mar it. Now, opposite end, clay bars. Clay bars are going to be much more <laughs> abrasive, much more stronger of a clay feature. So let's say you have heavy overspray on a panel. When you have that heavy overspray on that panel and you can't get it off with a fine grade clay towel, you need to step up to the clay bar because you need to be able to remove those particulates off the surface. Once you have that, you are going to mar the surface, but you're only gonna use a clay bar in the situation that you're planning on doing a quick light polish. Maybe you're using Uno Pure or using Uno Protect and you're doing a quick one step. That's kind of the reason for it. Or if you're gonna go for full correction. If you're going for full correction, you want that paint surface as clean as possible. And so that's when we say, uh, you know, utilize those, utilize that clay bar to the best of the ability because it's gonna really remove it. It's, it's creating the best tool for the job. So yes, there are those uh, situations where you're gonna to need to deal with that. So okay. yeah, it does cause marring, but depends on what the purpose is and what tool you're using. It also depends on the lubricant you're using, whether or not you're using clay spray, whether or not you're using 
uh, paint gloss or you're using O&R, 250, you know, 121 to one. There's a lot of different clay loops. Some people like using just soap and water. When the car's wet, covered in soap, they'll grab a clay bar, they'll rub it all down. That's fine, it, it, to each their own. However, if you're not planning on polishing, the safest step is a clay bar and a proper clay lube, or clay towel, sorry, excuse me, clay towel and clay lube, no pressure. Let the towel do the work for you. Okay, excellent. And I've got a question here for Dylan. I realize he's hard at work here, but uh, I think it's a fairly let him easy finish, one. Let him finish that panel. Yeah. Okay, it's not a very technical one. That's why I wasn't too concerned. Uh, okay, we got Grant Hawtrey here asking, question for Dylan, one Rupa's tool you could only use for the rest of your life. Go. Ooh, gosh. Um, well, if, if I've actually got to get stuff done, it's an LHR 15, Mark III. Um, but my actual favorite one to use is the LHR 75 pneumatic. Oh, yeah. I'd have a hell of a time doing a lot of work with that, though. I don't think I'd get a whole lot done if I only had a, a tiny tool like that to work with. But, um, yeah, those, those are my two favorites. If it's, uh, if it's a full-size tool, it's the LHR-15. If it's, uh, if it's just a tool, period, my favorite one to use is the LHR-75 pneumatic. I think it's a monster. Excellent. Yeah, well, it sounds cool, too, so there's yeah. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a little mini dirt bike. Uh, we've got Don't Skip Puddin'. I'm so glad you brought that up. Saying, hi guys, loving my Rupa's polishers. I have a 15, a 75, and a Nano. I have a 2019 Mustang GT with the factory vinyl stripe. Should I mask the stripe off or not worry about it? And did he say it was a matte stripe? Uh, he just says factory vinyl stripe. So factory unclear vinyl. if it's in the paint or if it's on top. So, so there's a couple of things to kind of consider. If it's... A stripe period, a vinyl stripe, you don't want to be jamming compound and yep. stuff up against that edge because it's going to be a real nightmare to get out of there. Um, so you want to mask off for that reason, just to prevent from mm -hmm. jamming compound that you got to then come back yeah. and try and toothpick it out. Um, the stripe itself, if it's gloss, can be polished. A lot of it, as long as it's a fairly mild approach, you can do that. If it's matte, you don't want to ever touch it with polishing right. compound because you'll make a shiny spot. But um, best practice, yeah, generally you're going to, you're gonna mask off vinyl anytime you can. It's it's just a it's so hard to get compound out of those edges once it's in there. It's just a it's a lot more work. It's it's, a, it's far more efficient just to prevent it in the first place. Yeah. Well, and I got one here for Charlie. This is uh, a little bit of a machine debate. He's gonna ask him. <laughs> uh oh. All right, detail dude. Now here's a question. If you like the fifteen twenty one question, Charlie, a lot of people in detailing forums keep on ranting that the cut of the twenty one versus the fifteen is so much bigger that you should ditch the 15 and just use the 21. I watched the Rupa's webinar and did test spots myself, and I didn't really see a huge difference when it comes down to cut. Am I wrong? Um, where I actually use both. Um, because if you think of the throw, you mm -hmm. know, if I'm buffing a hood or side of a car, I'll use my 21. But if I've got a car with, with deep coves or whatever, those little tight areas, I need that, that smaller, smaller yeah. orbit. Yeah. It, so those, so that's where I will use. So say if I'm using, you know, like for instance, we've got a uh, California Spider, you know, that we're doing now, Ferrari California Spider with the deep dish. And mm -hmm. so on the fenders, on the rounded part of the fenders, I'm using a 15. Mm -hmm. But across the hood and the rest of the body, I'm using the 21. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it just it depends on the. It, it all goes back to what you're trying to achieve and where you're trying to get it into. So obviously. In tight areas with a 21, sometimes that throw, I mean, you can almost feel where it will want to hit. Mm -hmm. So where with the 15, it's a little better. Yeah, and, and people have to, have to consider, too, it's, that it's not just about rate of material removal for efficiency. Yeah. Efficiency is about a lot of things besides just how fast does it cut, right? Yeah. That is part of it. But if you can't get the 21 into where it if needs to get easily, yeah. you're wasting time trying to finagle a bit. Especially well, there. what you end up doing is the no-no. You end up tipping it. Yep. Yeah. And when you're starting to tip it, you're trying to cut it with just the edge of the pad. Yeah, and, you're and doing you can't do, and they, that's not a good thing. Yeah, it's not efficient. So, I, yeah, it, and technically, there there is no difference in cut rate really between the two in terms of a straight line down the middle of a hood. They are going to cut and polish about the same. Yep. The 15 does it with a smaller pad, higher RPM, yep. smaller orbit. 21, lower speed, bigger pad, larger orbit. In essence, dumbed down to a, a large degree the rate of paint correction comes down to velocity. It's the, how far does the pad move? So if we're doing it with the size of the orbit or we're doing it with faster orbits, 
one way or the other, it's still, the velocity is still there. So you're getting the cut one way or the other. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, don't, don't believe everything you read on the internet and don't get drug into detailing forms where people <laughs> yeah. want to argue with you about this it's, stuff. Yeah. Use what works best for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, and well, and, you run into that, I mean, in everything. It doesn't matter what the tool is. It's, yeah. it's like in the paint world. It's, it's like which spray gun is the best spray gun. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like a it's tell the one everybody. that works best for you. That's it's like if, you, if you're stuck with one paint gun, then you're an applicator. You're not a painter. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, and so if yeah. you get stuck with that on the tools of a buffer too, you have to, you have to understand they're made for certain reasons. Right. And like you had mentioned, you do, I mean, because I tried to do the side by side, trying to figure out on myself, okay, which one do I need? Which is the best one, 21 or 15? You do it on a flat panel, I didn't see a difference. No, and you won't. Where the difference is, is in the nooks and crannies, the areas where I'm trying to put the Bigfoot 21 in mm -hmm. versus a 15. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and that, so that in those areas, it's just what am I buffing? Mm -hmm. yep. That determines which tool I'm using. Yep. You know, and then you can. Oh, that cool little guy. Yeah, or yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, so yeah. And that was that was my experience too. Was I started out with a 21, and that was all I had, and it was very difficult because when I had my shop, I detailed a lot of uh, classic cars. So you've got a lot of curves, you've got a lot of different things, a lot of different angles, and I was like, man, this 21's really. Difficult to, <laughs> to really. Oh, get, actually, it's not like it's totally missing. Like a whole section it, of the paint. This is not working. And then I think the the mini was the next one to come out mm -hmm. that was released. And so we picked up one of those, and we were like, "Well, this is way holy cow!" Like I'm able to get this little edge here. I'm able to because I'm getting the full rotation in that smaller area where I'm actually getting that correction. And then as each tool came out, you know, me and the guys started buying each tool because we're like, "Oh, now we can do this." Oh, and I remember when the Nano finally came, we were like, we can do metal dashboards inside cars finally <laughs> yeah. without masking off a hundred yeah. different things. We can get in. Yeah, we can do in firewalls. In yeah. Now we can finally like unlock that rather than doing it by hand or getting a small air powered rotary. Like we were, we were super excited to be able to have that ability. And so it, it doesn't matter which one's going to be better. It's what's going to be better for the, the vehicles. And for me, it was, I need multiple sizes because of like you, the cars you work on, everyone's They're different, different. And if you need to get that out, you have to get it out. And a 21 is not always going to do that for you. Exactly. So. Now, I have Stephen Brown here just wanting to say, massive fan of Charlie, say hi. That's literally what he said. So he's saying hi. And, uh, well, <laughs> I'm glad you have low standards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have Never a meet your heroes, right. man. Never yeah. meet yeah. your heroes. <laughs> So I'm going to get to a few of these so we can kind of get them for you guys, and then you can okay. get back to work. But yeah, absolutely. Kyler here, go, Kyler, go forth. Us at K&N Detail here in Orlando, Florida, love our rag company towels and all Rupus polishers. Keep up the good work, everybody. Oh, well, thank you, Kyler. And then we got Broham73 following up. When would you go to the Rupus wet sanding pads over, say, a wool pad with an aggressive cutting polish? Oh, that's actually, it's an interesting conversation I had with Jimmy here in the studio when we were setting this up. So there's a few arguments that can be made in either way. And this is talking in general terms because mm -hmm. there's a million different variables in this. But by and large, and feel free to correct me if, I, if you think I'm wrong, but a 3,000 grit foam-backed abrasive disc, which is what we sanded this with, is oftentimes less aggressive than doing multiple heavy compounding steps. So the the decision to sand really is if you do a test spot with your most aggressive combination so if i hit it with the blue wool or microfiber in our coarsest compound and it just is like wow that that made it shiny but the defects are still those are deep i'm just going to go to sandpaper why, right. why 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 waste time with multiple 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 hits right. when i can be very measured sanding the one thing that sanding is good for is that you know exactly where you, when you are to where you're supposed yep. to be with compounding it's kind of a crapshoot you're buffing until the cycle's done and then you wipe off and you see if the defects gone right yeah. With sanding, you can stop the moment the defect disappears because you can see it. If you're doing it right, you can see the moment. So you stop exactly at the moment you need to. You're not removing more material than you need to. And then the buff out's super easy. I mean, you guys are seeing what we're doing with this 3000 grit here. It's a one and done type thing if we want it to be. So to answer the question in a roundabout way, it's really, it's paint dependent, but if the defects are so severe that a heavy compounding step isn't gonna address it in one step, then I'm generally grabbing sandpaper. Yeah. Well, and I'm gonna say Charlie's in a better spot because he knows exactly how much clear he's putting on. Yeah. So if you wanna give yourself some room to work and room to swim in, you can increase the level of gloss because you know you can go, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a couple more coats of clear just yeah, so that I can make sure it's right. Where 
like this hood, this is factory Dodge paint. You can get on it with a rotary and you may hit, you may burn through in a half a second where, you know, Dylan was able to kind of do some lighter work with the 3000 and then just bump around and play around and get better correction. Yep. Because you're, you're more metered. You know you're not removing a crazy amount. If we went rotary with wool, there's probably a good chance we could have knocked That's into it pretty perfect quickly. Perfect segue. Tomorrow on the Rupa's YouTube channel, we will drop <gasps> the go, what? no go decision video. So tomorrow at 1030 on our channel is a video that I shot. I actually just approved today. And it is all about deciding when there's enough paint to sand or not sand. Ooh, or heavy there you compound, go. So oh, yeah. the go, the go no go decision. Yeah. So uh, YouTube Rupus channel, uh, watch tomorrow, and that'll also help answer that question more than we even did here. So there you go. Oh, and uh, I will do a momentary plug here just to tell everyone: make sure you're sharing this stream with a friend who's into cars, into detailing, into Dylan, Charlie, Levi, anybody Woo. at the Rupus. I mean, this is all great. We want to share it with everybody. So. If you guys could please share it, that would make a big difference in, uh, you know, spreading the love. Mm -hmm. And next up, I've got Lars here from our friends over at Color Lock hey. saying, not my topic today, but great show, TRC team. Looking forward to Thursday. That's when they're going. Hey, Lars, Lars, thank you, brother. Appreciate you watching. I will, and I will now chime in question. and ask questions about interior work. Mm -hmm. Yes, for Do. Charlie. This one is a, a numbers question. Loosely, how many cars has Charlie painted? Well, if you count my Hot Wheels <laughs> and my, <laughs> yeah. honestly, that I have absolutely no idea. I really, truly have no idea. A lot is There's the been to that hundreds question. of them, yeah, <laughs> probably thousands. I don't know. You know, the the funny thing is though is is it's like I explain to people. It's like for me, I mean, if I paint four or five cars a year, though, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'll granted, you know, my Boyd days and stuff. I mean, we were pumping them out faster, but but really, I mean. The guys that are the real painters are the guys that are working in the production shops. I mean, they're just nailing them all the Yeah, time. multiple cars getting yeah. pushed out the door. You know, yeah. Some of them just don't know how to bend over to paint rockers and stuff. Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. or they have a tendency well, to paint over yeah. top of scratches. That's what, but that's, hey, that's yeah, okay. yeah. If you but spray yeah. enough up but, here, eventually but, it rolls down there. There you go. Yeah. So. But yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's a tough one because I actually have absolutely no idea. Nope, fair. No fair idea of the number. So you lose track. Yeah. You're just kind of in totally a fog, fun. you know yeah. what I mean? That you go right. through that and, and it's just like, I mean, you're just, you're in survival mode, man. And that's yeah. what it is. It's just, uh, this living one's for, for the Dylan next day. Here. <laughs> yeah. A simple question for you guys. Does blue foam pad cut more than yellow wool? Uh, no, it would not. Um, it's, it, it, it's going to be pretty heavy cutting, but no, I, I would still say the yellow wool is going to have more cut than the blue foam in most situations. There might be some odd paint situations where it responds better to the foam pad, but um, I'd say 99% of the time you're going to get an edge and cutting power out of the yellow wool. I haven't ever experienced personally a situation where the blue foam cuts more than it does. Okay. And I'll have to jump in here on this one too, because I did that actually side by side here on this panel and you can come in oh, close yeah. in a minute to see it. The blue foam would, it did the same liquid DA fine with blue foam and yellow wool. Yellow wool ultimately just pulled out deeper defects and still finished just as well, if not better than blue foam. Yeah. With, well, yeah. with pa cutting pads, you, you got to consider it's it really the, 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 the basis of it is surface area. It's why a microfiber pad cuts so well. It's yeah. why it's the most aggressive material is it's surface area. There's more per square inch coverage with that. A wool pad with all the fibers is going to have more surface area than any equivalent foam pad so you've got more potential for cut with that it's just the the nature of the beast so okay now this one's kind of for everybody I'll pull that up there frank n asking with waxes sealants and coating resistant more chemicals what do you use to remove them prior to polishing what are your pre-polishing steps do you clean the car after polishing a lot of questions in that. There's a lot. <laughs> um, uh, so the the prep we did, for example, on this, you've got to, obviously, I came in, this was washed. So yeah. thank you, TRC team. So I did a chemical decon on this, and then I clayed the it. Thing. Yep. And then just to be on the safe side, I used G-Technic Panel Wipe, which is, again, probably the most aggressive solvent that you kind of readily get um, to just strip anything. You Before any sanding or polishing operation, you want to make sure that there is no sealant wax, anything on the surface, because that stuff is going to gum up the pad and reduce cut rate. It's going to yeah. clog up the pad. Um, so you have to do, at a bare minimum, alcohol wipe, but there are some products that are resistant to alcohol now, so you've got to have something like a G-Technic panel wipe. Um, but yeah, chemical decon, mechanical decon, polish on fresh, clean paint. You don't want to have anything between the pad or the sandpaper or anything and that paint, because that's going to yep. screw it up. Yep. Sure. And this last one's for Charlie. There are other comments, but I want to get you guys going again, so I'm just going to drop this one for Charlie, and then we can carry on. 
So we got Dino here asking another one for Charlie. I'm looking for another mini spray gun. I already have a SATA mini jet 4400. Any suggestions? I lost him. SATA oh. mini 400 he's got is SATA what he mini has. Jet 400, but he's looking for another mini spray 4, gun. 4400. 4400. Okay. Yeah. The, I'm he's looking for another mini gun. I'm a fan of Iwata. Yeah. Um, the atomization of it. Um, so for a mini gun, I would use the LPH 80. There you and go. that's an Iwata. So just the atomization is there. So. Excellent. Good answer. Take it. Well, paint. All right, guys. Paint. Very paint get back question. To it. I know. We haven't had one of those in a long time. <laughs> That's good, though. That's why we got everybody here. All right. And then uh, I'll, I'll remind I'm, everybody, I'm too, Dane, to if they want to see out. a specific combination, there's something that we haven't done yet and they want to see us play with on here. Like, I'm going to grab a fresh yellow wool pad and I'm going to do Uno Protect on the front of this. Oh. to try and see what we can push with I an like all-in-one it. because mm -hmm. that's the kind of weirdo I am. I like but if that. there's anything else somebody wants to see, that's what I'm, I'm here for. Rowdy. That's right. All right. I'm going to have to sneak. You're going to sneak out? Yeah, I've got it. Oh. Charlie, I've thank got, you. It's so crazy. So the car, we've got a customer, Manish, sweetheart of a dude. I mean, I love him to death. He's one of the Aston Martin projects that we got, right? He called me a while back. And you saw the car sitting there. So he calls me a while back and, and tells me, watch this. see there what we started with a little bit hazy if we were going for a 90 90 95 percent defect removal on a paint system like this i'd probably follow it up with some kind of softer foam pad step but overall i'm pretty impressed what we're getting out with just a fine da fine polish along with a yellow yellow wool pad now to the yeah, customer that had the question earlier if you want to come up here real quick so if you can see here Somewhere in the middle here is where I made that line. Over here is blue foam with DA Fine. You notice, still a little bit hazy like we expected, but if you notice, there's still some deeper straight line defects in there. Whereas moving back to here, this section was where I did yellow wool with the DA Fine. Still got a little bit of that micro barring that we would expect. However, we pulled out all of those deeper straight line defects. And overall, this is the result I would expect from a cutting step. No, oh, that's looking good so far. Now, I'm not sure if Levi can hear me, but this question is probably one he can help answer. Oh, okay. Doing on questions, Dane. Anybody need to have anything answered? Yeah, I've got some here. If you guys are ready for more, I am. Actually, All right. I need to have somebody push a camera in on this because I just took out 3,000 grit sand scratches with Uno Protect. Oh yeah, we better get a closer look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's coming through for you guys, but holy cow. You could probably pull my comment off the screen there so we could see a little bit more. There we go. 
So how's that for all-in-one cutting, huh? So maybe show a little bit of a contrasting section there, Dylan, to show what it was like before. Right up here. All right, what was the question, Dan? Okay, so let me look in here. I've got Mike Spina, commonly here on the show. I've never used a Rupa's wool pad, but TRC and Rupa's say that it's super safe on paint. Should I be worried? I want to try and use it on my Acura. Thanks. Yeah, they're, they're incredibly safe. Um, a lot of people got, th th there's a kind of a false conception that wool is this dangerous material, and it kind of gets that from the fact that for so long it was associated with rotary. So everybody thinks wool pad, they think rotary buffer, they think holograms and really aggressive. This is a different type of wool. It's, it's still wool, but this is a completely different animal. No, it's still sheep, I shouldn't say different animal. Um, <laughs> but, um, but it's a different type of pad. So these are actually technically less aggressive than like a microfiber pad. And plenty of people are very comfortable using microfiber pads for their cutting stages. Um, you know, and, and they don't think twice about it, but they get kind of panicky about wool. The wool will be less aggressive, generate less heat on the surface than the uh, microfiber pads will. Uh, and produces a better finish in a lot of cases. So um, I'd say dive in, man. If you're, especially if you've used a microfiber pad before, it's going to be a, a you're going to get a better result and uh, and a better user experience, honestly, than you would with a lot of microfiber pads. So yeah, I think it catches people off guard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, we got Hans here asking the important questions for Dylan. Yes. When will George come to the Netherlands? I, you know, he, he has a separate, uh, he's represented <laughs> by a different agency than myself, uh, so they book him out. Uh, so we, we don't share representation, so George will, uh, you'll have to ask George directly for that. I don't, Noted. Uh, why isn't Hans doesn't want me to come over? I mean, I'm kind of I'm a little hurt. Yeah, no, I guess it's an either-or scenario, and uh, you, <laughs> have you ever not chosen. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, have you ever... I think he probably just... Yeah, that's true. So, Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. We'll see. It, it'll work. By the way, Uno Protector on a 3,000 grit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, okay. That's, I don't know, we got a camera running around well, they here. Already came over and they already it, yeah. came and saw it? Yeah. Yeah. So that that's awesome. Yeah. That's So, again. I really do like this product. <laughs> it's, it's one of those that, like, it just works, period. Yeah, let's do and it then over here. it still holds up because of the fact that, like, you can wipe a paint prep on it and it'll still stay yep that's what's so crazy so oh, it's time for a little pepsi double diet so pepsi, pepsi break. break yeah lovely now while levi's drinking that i'm going to put the next question on the screen because thank you dane we have a friend here richard parsons hi again guys from new zealand another awesome show just wanted to ask if things are happening for black friday this year they are Lots of things happening for Black All Friday. The things. Um, we haven't announced anything yet, but please, if you haven't already, go sign up at the ragcompany.com. You can pick out, you can sign up to the newsletter, the details, and uh, mm -hmm. that's when you'll know when we go live and you'll be the first to know any specials or anything. Anything for you guys for Black Friday for your distributors that you Our know? distributors will be pumping out a bunch of offers, so we coordinated some things. You'll start seeing those uh, in the coming months, but uh, or coming weeks, I should say. Um, but uh, since we don't sell direct, we're not doing the promotion, but there are some things in the works uh, coming for Rupus. There so you go. Excellent. Just and, stay tuned. Uh, Next up, I've got Rick Kolb here. I'm trying to order towels. Platinum package or gold package seem to be out of stock. Please advise. Thank you, as always, and great show today. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you if the packages are out. That's, uh, that's going to be a production thing, so maybe tonight we'll tell, our, uh, tell the boss and let him know that Make more. they're out of stock, and we'll see what we can do. But uh, as always, you can pick out any of the towels. You can pick them up. Buy them. If you're not already a member of the business program, that gives you 15% off every day, every item in the store. So Yeah, and it's an important thing to note, too. When it comes to the towel packages, they're actually you know, comprised of several different towels. So if one of them happens to be out, Correct. then the package itself becomes unavailable. So you yep. can still usually buy a lot of the individual items and, and piece it together if you really want to get Correct. more or less the kit. Exactly. Good point, Dane. Anything interesting with Uno Pure over there? I'm seeing a white pad. Just now trying it. Okay. Oh. Well, just keep it posted. I want to see what it does next. I'm excited. I, myself, am <laughs> going to put an Uno Protect racing stripe in the sand mark. I here, like it. Uh, just because that was fun to see that happen, so we'll do it again.
Now, Levi, if you can step away from the running polishers for a moment here. I'll well, I'm holding one. his machine, but that's oh. all right, Dane. I'm right in between <laughs> two at the same time. So. Sorry, my camera view shows differently. <laughs> that's okay. All right. Well, thanks to our friends at Pepsi for keeping me hydrated enough to answer these questions for you guys. Excellent. Now, I'll pull them up on screen here. James okay. DePayne says, Customers that already have ceramic coated vehicles, can we still remove minor defects via polishing? I assume he means without losing your coating. Yes, but that depends on the coating that you're using. It depends on the machine that you're using, on the pad that you're using, and the compound that you're using. A lot of variables. Don't use a don't use a compound. Use a very fine polish. Use a very fine, like the ultra fine pad that that uh, Troy's using. Um, maybe something very light and easy, like Uno Pure or uh, yeah. DA Fine. Uh, you're going to want to use a product that doesn't have a lot of abrasives in it. Because the goal is you're trying to utilize, you're trying to remove that defect without cutting and removing the uh, coating that is on the surface. It's, okay. a, it's a kind of yes, you can do it, but it's only on certain coatings. You guys got to remember there are some chemicals that can destroy and break a chemical or a, a ceramic coating very easily, and so it behooves you to make sure that you know if your ceramic coating can hold up to that. We have a couple of aha. Oh. So Okay. I did Uno Pure on this pillar, and okay. that's, a, that's a nice result. Oh, that's pretty dope. Holy cow. With the white pad, even. With the white foam, yeah. And that's after the yellow foam with... Uh, yellow wool with... DA yellow fine. wool with... What did you use on it? DA Fine. DA, DA Fine. So Fine so and Ultra Fine to get that result. That's pretty really dope. Up yeah. What this is actually telling me is we may not need to go as aggressive as the yellow. True. Foam. So I think our next hmm. step here is to try some yellow foam. Mm -hmm. See if we can get closer to this finish. If I can steal that light for me, I'm going to go over here and... Pretty nice. Now, the second AHA, we've already seen it once before, but I'm, that's just... I am I love that result. I'm just amazed, right? I'm very pleased with yourself. Take a little there. sandpaper, oh, yeah. sand up sand, that hood. Sand, sanded bark, yellow wool with Uno ah, Protect. Nice and, all and shiny one. and polished. Ooh. It's pretty impressive. That's and that a, was, that's a and pretty then I, stark and, contrast. And yeah. then I panel wiped it. This, so this yeah. is after G Technic panel wipe with an all in one. Yeah. So pretty wicked. Take into account that it usually takes about four hours for those polymers to fully cross them. Yeah, this yeah. will just get glossier. So <laughs> now I got one for you guys. I know you answered it earlier, but for okay. people who just join in, I think it's always a relevant topic. When is it time to change or discard pads? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we did answer that earlier. So. Um, discard well when your performance drops off. So if uh, you've you're blowing the pads out after every couple of panels and your performance just isn't staying consistent, then it's time to swap to new pads. Um, we talked about earlier having four, five, six pads per car. If you kind of divide the car into sections, so if you think of four pads, divide the car into 25% pieces. Um, there's a set number you can work off if right. you want to do that. Um, but yeah, the, the main indicator is if you're having, if the results are changing. So with the beginning, you were getting good cut and good finish, and then it's gotten progressively worse. Well, yeah, that's time to swap to a fresh pad and keep that performance consistent. Um, in terms of just pad life period, if, if it's a fiber pad, you'll start seeing fibers coming off. Like our wool pads lint very little when they're brand new and they stop linting completely usually in the first use. Um, but if you start seeing linting suddenly or they become kind of threadbare, there's bald spots on yeah. them, it's time for it to go. Um, foam pads, they start to fray and deteriorate. You'll see the actual pores of the foam start to kind of break apart. That's, that's an indication it's time to retire it. Or take it and use it for something that's a little bit less important. You know, there's, right. there's other things you can use a foam pad for. I've, I know guys will cut foam pads into triangle-like wedges and use them as dressing applicators once they're at the end of their life. So um, it's kind of like the towel thing we talked about earlier. Yeah, don't it's just cost per use. Yeah, don't throw them away. Use them for something else. There's well, other uses. Yeah, so like I'd take some of these uh, wools after they've been, you know, used up for their life. What I do is then repurpose them as a like diamond plate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, aluminum yeah so yeah, they're probably not good for clear coat, but heck, metal polishing, you can you can burn whatever. I mean, even some of the fines work really really well. Uh, when you're doing metal polishing because you can destroy that pad and that was what we did in my shop even with the old school big wools mm -hmm. when we were done with the big you know big eight inch wool pad uh, for paint it became a metal polish pad and it was like that's what we're using with metal polish and we're using it on diamond plate yep you know for big big panels and things like that just to get that initial cut yep 
you know. So there's a lot of uses after it. The other thing is watch between the delamination of the foam and the backing plate, yeah. you know. Use the claw tool. Yeah, so uh, this, the most common issue we see is people pulling from here and they rip. That, that Velcro's got to... Especially when the pads are warm, especially yeah. after. That's the biggest so thing. The whole reason we have the blade under this, it can be used for spreading compound, but really it's so you can insert it in there and it gives you something that breaks that seal off a little bit and keeps you from pulling from the edge and ripping that foam. Because yeah, when the foam on the edge of these pads starts to go, your performance is dropping off because you got the edge kind of oh, I did it. I did it the other day. I was, I was working on a car. And I literally pulled my pad, my claw tool was sitting right on my KXK <laughs> stand. It was sitting right there. And I was standing oh. right here and I started to pull on the back on the pad. And when I did that, it started to tear the foam. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was a two second mistake. If I would have just grabbed it and done it, I probably would have saved that pad and would have been able to utilize it again in another session. But as soon as I did that, I <laughs> tore the foam and destroyed the pad. And so it's one of those things where I was like, huh, sometimes you just got to stop. Right. Tool, right. And, and it wasn't like, oh, man, I couldn't find it. It was sitting right Staring next to me. You going, Why and are you I using didn't. Me? Yeah. And I didn't grab it and use it. I didn't have to hunt for it. I didn't have to like dig out of the toolbox. It was right there on the bench. So very frustrating. But there's a reason for that. Yep. Now, guys, I have several questions here, but. I'm going to ask them, and then I'm going to follow up with Detail Dude, who actually has a combination he wants you to try out. So uh, okay. we'll get to that after we ask a few of these questions. Okay. So, guys, feel free to chime in. Uh, we'll start with U.S. Man, Us Man, however he wants to be called. My car has sticky paint and is really hard to polish. Any suggestions? Uh, sticky paint. So um, I don't know where he's from, but I would guess he's probably from an Asian country because they have that problem there more than anywhere else. Um, sticky paint is actually a condition where the paint is, it's basically ultra soft paint. And what mm -hmm. it likes to do is it grabs onto the compound and almost absorbs it. Right. It's the softest soft paint you've ever dealt with. We don't see it here in the States. I have yet to see it here in the States, honestly. So it's something we encounter internationally more. Um, the weird thing is, and trust me on this, it's a very bizarre approach. Typically, the ice way water? to no the way to solve the sticky paint problem, yeah, ice water, <laughs> is to go to a very coarse foam pad. Which seems counterintuitive, right. but again, we're going back to that surface area thing I was talking about. So wool, good amount of surface area, microfiber, high surface area. The very very fine white foam is going to have a lot of surface area because they're very small pores. But if you go to something like the blue foam. Um, and use it with a fine polish or something like right. that. So you're coarse reducing, pad, fine polish. Yep, and you're reducing surface area. So that's always something to try. You do very, very short section passes. So if your typical application is six, you know, one, two, mm -hmm. three, one, two, three, try doing just three and stopping. Um, because it is so soft, it loads up and it hazes real fast, and then it kind of seems to like lock the polish in there right. and hold yeah. on to it. It's a very difficult wipe off. So um, yeah, one of my favorites. Pad, the most porous coarse, so like our blue foam, even our old blue foam was good for this. Um, something like DA Fine or Uno Pure and a very, very short pass on your sticky paint and that's going to give you the best chance for success. It's one of those things you're going to have to experiment and it's, the solutions for that type of paint tend to be very, very weird. They're usually odd combinations that you would have never thought of so you have to really kind of experiment a little to find the right combo. Nice. Okay, next up I've got Frank N saying for a home DIYer what would make a great Rupus starter polisher setup? Prefer two-step compound slash polish on his 19 Mustang GT. Mm. Troy? Looking at the compound and polish, just for anyone who's looking for a, you know, a generic two-step, I would say you really can't go wrong with our yellow DA fine liquid and then the yellow wool pad and the yellow foam pad. Essentially, the yellow foam is going to give you a great finishing pad. The yellow wool is going to give you pretty much the majority of the cut you would need in most scenarios. Yeah. That'd probably be my, that's generally where I've been steering people. Yeah. And then machine? So machines, what I like about our tools is, if you've ever been on our website and kind of researched our products, we have an ES line, or what we call our legacy model tools, and then we have the Mark III's. What I love about both of them is they're both professional quality tools. They both come with the same warranty and the both support from the factory. However, the ES tools are really catered towards a lower price point. So it's for your weekend warrior. It's for someone who you know isn't polishing as a career. You're not spending five days a week, eight hours a day polishing. Yeah. 
So truthfully, I would steer you towards either our 15 or our 21 ES polisher. Still very, very high quality tools. And from my past running our repair department, we still get quite a few of those in from very high end car dealerships and high production shops. So yeah. definitely yep. still a very powerful tool at a much more competitive price point. Yeah, you, on average, you'll save probably about 120 to $140 versus the Mark III version going ES. Um, 15 ES tends to be a little bit more, I think, DIY, driveway Joe friendly. Yeah. It's the right size. Um, if not that one, the other tool that gets often overlooked is very the overlooked. Duetto. The LHR 12E, the Duetto, is a sweetheart of a tool. It's fun to work with. Um, yeah, actually, grab, grab, I'm gonna off go the grab wall, it off it the wall. It's you just kind of the forgotten it. one because the 15 and the 21, they both have larger orbits. They're the more this, you know, professional form factor where you got the, the pistol grip and everything. The Duetto is a little bit more, you know, it's hand on body, um, so it's a little bit more compact, but it runs the same pad system as the 15. Um, it's just a, it's a fun tool to work with. I yeah. really do enjoy using this tool. It just it kind of gets forgotten in the mix because yeah. all these other tools are so awesome. Um, so I would consider 15 ES or Duetto would be my suggestion. And a good point to this too, would go back to what Charlie talked about earlier about orbit. So just looking at, you know, keeping the backing plate size the same, this holds a five inch backing plate with a holds a six inch pad, just like the 15. However, this has a smaller orbit. So I would say this is also a little bit more versatile into fitting into different tighter curves and contours than the 15 per se. Yeah. Especially to someone who's less experienced with a random orbital movement. Yeah. It's a lot easier to manage because you're only dealing with a 12 millimeter offset instead of 15. So. But yeah, and so there's 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 a couple of good options. Yeah, I was gonna mention anyone who has the three inch mini. If you like how smooth this tool is, I would recommend giving the Duetto a try because it is equally as smooth, and I would say the two smoothest tools in our entire product lineup. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, I've got a few more here for you guys, and then I'll get to the uh, I guess we call going. them challenges. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up we have Alfonso. I'll throw him up on the screen here. Alfonso asks for Dylan and Troy. Hi, from Philippines. When will I use microfiber pads in car paint? I assume he's just looking to know when he should be using microfiber pads. So uh, microfiber is still going to outcut wool. So we talk a lot about the wool because we like the performance of it, the fact that it gets close to microfiber cut, but it doesn't have that same level, especially when you get to really hard paint. So if you're on a ceramic clear, we we're talking a little bit about ceramic clears with Charlie earlier, those paints that are just really, really hard and they don't respond well to polishing, the microfiber is always going to be king of the mountain in terms of cutting ability. Um, the drawback being is it has a higher potential for hazing. So um, to answer the question directly, you'd use it when you have severe defects on hard paint. Um, if you don't, then I would go to the wool because your potential for finish is higher. Um, so you're not going to run into that hazing issue and it should have enough cutting power for most common defects. Yeah. Um, you're just going to reserve, kind of treat microfiber as the the final step kind of, yeah the final step like i'm i'm out of options i need the most aggressive combination i'm going to grab that microfiber yeah. pad i'm going to really go at this thing. i've always developed i've always said and jason rose taught me this he said on a microscopic level microfiber cuts like a samurai sword yep he goes and that's one of the things that sets it apart from say wool or foam is the ability to cut yep. and so he goes if you can't get it out and it's on something hard that's in your brain, think of that. That yeah. microfiber pad is a samurai. So you've got to get something out. You're not utilizing a scalpel or like a pocket knife. It's a sword at Actually, this point. Heard Troy, Troy said this earlier. He, the microfiber slices. Yep. Wool scrapes. Yep. It, it, and it's a weird way to think about it. No, that's that's, kind it, of, yep. that's a little bit of a different way to look at it. So. Yeah. And uh, we've got Brad Robin here. What do you recommend for polishing out defects slash water spots and PPF? on hoods where you can get the paint looking great, but then the PPF stands out. Oh, it, that's tricky because PPF is a, is a wild card because there are some that take well to polishing and there are some that do not. Yeah. Um, so first question is to kind of find out what one you have and consult the manufacturer on what they recommend. Um, if it is a polishable uh, film, you still want to stay on the very, very mild end of things. Um, you know, you're going to go white foam, Uno Pure, something like that. You're not going to get more aggressive than that. You get too aggressive with a PPF, what you're going to end up doing is probably clouding it up. Um, or melting it. Melting it, just deforming it, causing all kinds of weird effects. And then you're at a point where you're going to have to pull it off and replace it. So if the water spots are so bad that you can risk it, and if you know they aren't coming out, you're going to replace it anyways, then maybe go for it. But if it's a, eh, I can live with these water spots, try something very mild. If they don't come out, then you just kind of have to live with them and until the, you're ready to The same it. rule applies. Chemically decontaminate it first. Make sure you remove the minerals that have embedded themselves in that PPF. And remember, some of those PPFs are self-healing, so they respond really well to heat. Yeah. So you may be but able to remove everything, 
there's a difference. Yeah. So they respond to radiant heat. So that that's can be an different. IR lamp out in the sun, but not frictional heat by rubbing no. it with a polishing no. compound. Yeah. Two different yeah, types they, of heat. That's, so heat gun, radiant, like an IR lamp. Yeah. That's what we used to do in my shop. We'd pull an IR lamp, throw it on there, or we'd pull it out in the sun after we've removed the water spots to see if the film does its own self-healing like it's described. Mm -hmm. And remember, a lot of these films have warranties. So if that film is new on the car, you're the original owner, and maybe it's a 10-year warranty film, worst case scenario, you'd warranty repair it and get a new piece of film exactly. put on it. Yeah. You know, That's the goal. It's supposed to be replaceable. Yeah, it's the reason you probably paid a premium for that film is yeah. the warranty. Yep. Okay. Now, I have three final from the same person kind of more complex questions, and then Ooh. we'll get to the challenges. And I actually have a couple, so I'm going to spread them out between Dylan and Troy, so you guys cool. can go temp some stuff on panels. But uh, Lomos Tikas here has a few, starting with this one. Can I use the wool pads that Rupus offers for the Mini, Nano, and first-gen Rupus 15 ES to replace the microfiber? Is it the same process on cleaning pads, like with the microfiber, more or less? Yes and yes. Uh, replace? No. I mean, it, it's, it definitely has replaced microfiber for a lot of users just because of the versatility, but it will never completely replace microfiber. You're still going to have a paint that's going to come up. It's going to be so hard that it needs microfiber or the defects are so deep that it needs microfiber to cut it. So replace? No. Supplement? Yeah. Um, you're probably going to reach for the wool more often once you get your hands on it. Um, that's what we found is we're demonstrating using the customers are saying that they're grabbing the wool more often than they're grabbing microfiber, but there still are always going to be those situations where microfiber just makes more sense. Um, in terms of cleaning, yeah, it's all the same. Um, you know, you're going to try and, during the job, you're going to use compressed air, vacuum, or a brush to clean it. At the end of the job, we recommend machine washing. Uh, another plug for the Rupa's YouTube channel. There is a video on there with our official recommendations and process on how to clean pads with yours truly in it. So, um, youtube.com slash Rupa's, and then look up the pad cleaning video in Rupa's replies, and that'll outline the process. Excellent. And uh, the last two were kind of the same question, so I'll just put one up here from Lomas here saying, what I mean is, does wool have a finishing and correcting like the microfiber? So basically, it's just wondering which one he would turn to if he was looking for better finishing or better correcting or if it's a combination. Uh, you want to take this one? I'll let you go. Yeah, so I think it goes back to what we just talked about when it comes to actual pad material. So you have to think about what the paint is seeing. So wool is going to be a less aggressive pad material because of that scraping action. Um, if you really think about it, it's kind of contradictory. We're so used to using microfiber towels and thinking that that's a really gentle thing. But in reality, when we take that same material and put it on a pad, it, it just increases the aggressiveness by quite a bit. Right. So overall, I would say if you're looking for more cut, go for the microfiber. If you're looking for a better finish, go for the wool. And my input, I would add on to the end of what Dylan said as well, is overall, I think the user experience is going to be better for wool, and that's ultimately why you would choose wool more often. Yep. It's going to actually clean easier at the end of the day. You, as we all know, microfiber likes to grab and hold on to things, and that's you know that holds true. With What's good about it. Yeah, exactly. But also exactly. It does bad what it does. Okay, cases, exactly. Yeah. Wool pads are also going to run smoother and cooler. Um, so our wool, pad, our wool pads have that nice soft foam interface built into the open cell foam that keeps air moving through that. So ultimately, a little bit less aggressive. Our microfiber pads have a really firm polyurethane substrate that does not allow air through and just has them, it translates the tool movement much more directly to the paint surface. So it's going to be more aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, I would say the wool is going to offer a broader range of performance. It's not going to outcut microfiber, but it is going to outfinish it and it covers a much broader range. So you're going to reach for wool more often than you're going to reach for microfiber. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay, now come the challenges. So I'm going to give one to Dylan, one to Troy. We'll divvy them up and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so from Detail Dude, he uh, says to Dylan specifically, I'll pull it up on the screen here. Okay, you asked for it. Dylan, please do a test spot of both Rupa's Uno Protect on a blue coarse pad and next to it, Rupa's Uno Protect on a blue wool pad. And please Ooh. use a scan grip when you compare. Okay, I think I got enough real estate to do both of those. Okay, so that and was Uno uh, Protect oh, he with follows both blue up. combos. Okay. <laughs> he follows up by saying, but of course, Make some decent scratches first. So we got to show and tell. So you got to show the oh, scratches gotta before you show scratch? the result. Okay. I can and do that. then for Troy, I've got one here from Philip Van Boven saying, Try the Rupa's yellow wool with Uno Protect with a rotary. I like the rotary Ooh. on curvy cars. Ooh. Okay. Do we, we can bust out a rotary. Yeah. All right. Do we have Let's any rotary pads here? They're in my car. <laughs> Troy's going to have to run to his car to get rotary pads. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> 
All right, do so we want to get in close? I, it actually, Levi, do you have any tape? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna tape this off for him. He's, yeah, yeah, me. He, there was a little saltiness in that coffee. Well, let challenge. me go grab some. <laughs> this will work. we got about 20 minutes left, I think. So end on a, an aha we'll, we'll moment. We'll do the results as a reveal for uh, exactly. you know, the, the finish here. That'll be a great or way we to make them, Or we make them tune in next time to find out. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they'd love to hear that after <laughs> two hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, while i'm prepping this thank you everybody who's out there watching this is fun uh, this is kind of the most uh unique q a session I've ever done i kind of like doing it while i'm able to work on stuff this Wait, is right i like this yeah it keeps things moving uh, there's some oh, tape the way, i'm gonna dylan. grab a rotary yes yep i was gonna say by the way dylan i got brandon mccomb here in the comments just uh, oh. trolling you with uh <laughs> gifts so <laughs> So send him send him a a, a Bigfoot Sasquatch uh, gift for me. He'll he'll appreciate that. Well, he seemed <laughs> to be confusing you with Bigfoot in the comments. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I have a section that I'm going to be testing over there. I think okay. Troy is going to do Uno maybe on the truck. Okay. We'll see. I'll as as put the uh, rotary over here then on the ground. All right. So I'm going to need our tight camera to get in here and get our before. So we got a 3,000 grit sand scratch on here. So. And we will do blue wool, and we will do blue foam, I think, is what we'll probably do. So 3,000 grit sand scratch. We'll leave the tape mark there just for reference. And that was the combo, right, Dane? He wanted blue wool with Uno Protect and blue foam with Uno Protect. I believe so. Let me double check that and make sure we got that right. It's too late. I'm priming the pad. Can't go back now. <laughs> Can't go back now. So, yeah, it looks like Uno Protect on a blue course pad and Uno Protect on a blue wool pad. Okay. Yeah, that's what we'll do yep. both blues. Yep. All right. So, I will start up here. My lovely assistant stable the panel on that side for me. Stabilized. So this guy I'm going to have to prime. I don't have a mess. Dang, was my challenge specifically with yellow foam or white foam? Let me pull yours up one more time here. Philip said, try the Rupa's yellow wool with Uno Protect with Rotary. Ooh. Okay. Oh, so Throwing he's, he's a mixing ball. systems. Okay. So he didn't yellow need to go out to his car. Ball. No. We should have paid closer attention. Yeah. That's okay. I'm only reading these things. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dean. You're welcome. Okay. So, in addition, uh, I do have a question for Levi here. Yes. Kind of mix things up. I'll wait until you're done answering that before I start. I, uh, Sorry, are you I doing a that on bit fresh of a paint? Out of it, actually. Fresh clear back there? We so, Levi. We have plenty of real estate up here. You can jump on here. Yes. The question coming up on the screen is John Scribner. Hey guys, this one is for Levi. Did you ever look into signing up to be a PepsiCo partner with us, like I had mentioned a few months back? And John, if so, how are you enjoying it? <laughs> John, I want to say thank you for allowing us to become a PepsiCo partner. It's because of what uh, John said got me in the door and then uh, got my uh, local reps involved. And that was one of the great things that was able to lead us to having Pepsi as one of the sponsors of, well, TRCMA. That's right, <laughs> Rag Company Media Access. Thankfully, uh, Pepsi came to the rescue, brought us a whole bunch of Pepsis, Diet Pepsis, Bangs. We got some uh, Mountain Dew Zero. We got some, some well Gatorade hydrated. and water back here. Some Aquafina. It has been awesome. So 
Thank you again to Pepsi for being that. And thank you, John, for uh, giving me the idea of, you know, contacting PepsiCo to become a Pepsi Co partner. So <laughs> that was a great idea. Yeah. All right. I'm going to prime this blue pad up and then we will actually. Up, so I'm, I'm priming up here. I'm not trying to pull okay. the fast one. I want to get this because okay. this foam is cold. Just so we priming. Warmed up. Warm it up. Okay, add a couple drops, we'll do the other half and see where it gets us. <laughs> right there, right? Right in the middle, three mics. <laughs> oh, a little too much on the machine Both there. Much. I will say one thing I noticed immediately is you never checked on a rotary. It's probably one of the smoothest products I've ever experienced. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it goes fast. Now, leave all the way. I'm getting splattered. Okay. Okay, I'll throw them up on the screen while the guys are working. Han says, for Dylan or Levi, can I use Rupa's twisted wool pad with a DA? Or better yeah. slash only rotary? Only rotary. Yeah, I'm rotary. It would be a very bad, bad experience on a DA. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, that's why we have the specific DA wool pad. Yeah. yeah. I agree. All right. Threw enough compound on the rest of the hood. I think I threw less than you did. Yeah, you probably did. <laughs> right. Yeah, that made a mess. I did. I overloaded. Also, that blue foam with uh, Uno Protect is an unusual combo. It but is. It's a di very, very unique combination. But I, I asked for it. I asked for challenges. And Okay. Let's see what we got. Scan grip. There you go. Denny Hall says, this is detail here. porn. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm not taking my clothes off, so don't ask. All right, so there is blue foam with Uno. And then there is our control, our 3,000 grit sand scratch. And there is the wool. And I would give the edge to the wool here. Yeah, okay. I'm going to say that. And for the ton. folks at home, can we preview a section that hasn't been touched, or is it all pretty much done over by That's now? That's right here in the center is uh, what it used to look like. Right here. Okay, yep. So we have uh, we found a lot of combinations that work very well on yeah. the paint. Very nice. Yeah, this paint really loves it. Just an old junkyard hood. Yep. Literally, an aluminum we've got one this. At that. Yeah, it's an aluminum hood, and it's out of a uh, Dodge Grand Caravan. So, if you want to go pick up a very light hood for thirty-five bucks, Dodge Grand, Dodge Grand Caravans, Chrysler Town and Countries, they yeah. all have that. Well, um, the rotary. I mean, it gloss it up, but there's a there's definitely a circular pad mark there. Yeah. So pulled out any of the sanding scratches that were left pretty easily. All right, we can pull my comment off the screen there, so you can take a closer look. Go ahead and move in and take a look at this one. So it definitely, it it, it cut, but there's going to be that rotary wool pad artifact there. So we've got, yeah. just to be expected, that's more of the tool than it is the pad or the, pro, uh, the compound. So Yeah, it's all in the motion. So that's that's why they wanted to test, because they are curious, you know, what will happen. Yeah. And there, this, I mean, Uno is used, we have some body shops that are using it as a last step um you know, delivery type yeah. compounding. Yeah. And they're doing it with rotary. Very but they're smart. generally doing it with yellow foam or white rotary foam. They wouldn't be the DA foam. So Troy went off script. Troy, he Troy did. violated the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the systems. It was a DA pad on a rotary. It was a DA, a DA black pad hole on might a be opening rotary. up over the TRC studios as we speak. Hopefully uh, not. Okay. But uh, no, but that was a neat, it's it's best case scenario though. Yeah. Because there is going to be a guy in a shop that's going to do that and want to see if it works. Yep. Yeah. Troy so. Does. All right, guys, now I got a few more for you. Oh, sorry, Troy. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it, it runs nice. So yeah. It's not to be designed that way. <laughs> right? It worked yeah. awfully darn well. 
Okay, right. so I'm pulling up a few more here. I got Jimmy Lockard here saying, could you like cut with a finer microfiber pad through a less aggressive cut? Oh, for a less aggressive cut. Being microfiber, so, I assume it's still going to be aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, you could. Um, but on, honestly, though, we see such a good result with the phone or with the wool that I, I reach for microfiber less and less. I microfiber has become my heavy cutter. It's the big guns. Yeah, when the wool doesn't have enough cut. That's when I grab it. But if I'm talking finishing and mediumish cut, wool's my go-to. Nine times. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's saying that because he was wool. looking for a nice finish from really one able step. To finish with microfiber. Yeah. No matter the no matter the fiber, it's it's not always going to finish because there's yeah. the heat generation that microfiber induces and the cutability that it inherently is going to do. Even if it's a polishing microfiber yeah, exactly. pad, it's still going to cut. Exactly. So, so if if the goal, Dane, to the original question is mm -hmm. is a one step, the the wool has got a higher potential for achieving that. So I would still I I'm, I'm beating the wool drum pretty heavily today. But if that is the goal, I'm trying to cut and finish to get as maximum yeah. result in one step. The wool is yeah. going to have a better better chance of giving you that than the microfiber is mm -hmm. in most exactly. Cases. Yeah, he specifically mentioned finishing, so that would make sense. Now I've mm -hmm. got another here from. Robson uh, saying, does Uno 1 Protect match the cutting and finishing polishing pad? I'm sorry. We're, what, I'm not, repeat that? Yeah, repeat name? Does sure Uno it. Protect match the cutting and finishing polishing pad? Um, hmm. Oh, I mean, oh, maybe he's yeah. referring to our cut and finish rotary wool. Oh, yes. okay. You Perhaps could use it with that. Yeah, yeah, you could use it with that. We we are typically going to, that's a specific wool pad for rotary. Um, we're going to typically recommend that with more coarse cutters, um, but you would get a similar result probably not uh, probably get a similar result end result that what Troy got with the yellow DA wool pad on the rotary. You're still going to have a pad mark um, left behind by that because it's just that's what wool pads on rotaries do. Yeah, and this is a different type of wool yeah. mixture. Yeah, and you're, the combination of the tool movement with that wool is going to give you a different result. Can you use Ono Protect on the pad that Troy's holding there, the cut and finish rotary wool? Absolutely you could, mm -hmm. um, but you're going to see that pad mark like Troy did in the uh, other experiment we did there. Oh, yeah, just, just for the, the technical scientific aspect that I enjoy, this is a merino wool fiber, whereas the yellow pad is a cashmere wool fiber. So overall, just a softer, softer wool fiber. Yeah, more refined wool. Yeah, finer wool. Okay. And I've got Andy H. here asking, are you going to review the lineup at the end in one swoop? We can do that. Would you, if you would like that, we will certainly so, do that. I'll tell you what. We can do that after these couple more questions. And then we oh, can do that. Okay. All right. We'll get it's here like, to... Like hiding no. the presence. <laughs> our, our good friend Bait Addict simply wanted to say, I don't have time to watch this live, but I hope you guys are doing well. Ah, oh, Bait Thank Addict. You. Thank you. And then we've also got a few other people saying, got to run, but happy Veterans Day tomorrow. And we got Kirby Thompson here saying, thanks, TRC. Enjoyed this afternoon's cast and knowledge sharing. Awesome. Hey, thank you, Kirby. Thank you. And Detailed Dude saying more or less the same thing, saying, thank you all. See you tomorrow. And now let's go ahead and touch on the product range briefly. Okay. So you guys can uh, touch on all the stuff there. And I will stop taking questions just for anybody Looking to add more in. This is kind of concluding this part, but now the guys are going to go through and present a little bit. I'll still be looking for questions if they're relevant to what's going on now, though. Yeah. So. Oh, so we put little bottles up here. Oh, little there. guys are there, too. Little guys are coming to hang out. Oh, get rid of that. Oh, wants to slide this hood so slick now. What did we do? <laughs> well, uh, we have. Oh, no. Oh, it's, been, ruined it's been sealed. It. Okay, hold on. I feel like this one might be an inside joke for Dylan or something. Uh, okay. Uh, detailed afraid? disaster says, "Is it a prerequisite to have a cul-de-sac to work for Rupas?" Have a cul-de-sac. Oh, cul -de -sac. is he trying? Is he trying to rip on my hairline? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> oh <man. laughs> got right. him. Okay, well, there you go. Okay, there's one in every group. Well, man. how'd everything go, guys? I ca I went away. <laughs> Where were you? I, well, I had to go run a couple errands. You know, I was You're wrangling supposed to some leave cords. the building. You know, I was getting oh, all your airlines. Oh, okay, stuff wrangling like airlines. Thank you, appreciate it. You know, I was doing some things behind the camera. I also took a nap for about thirty <laughs> minutes. But <laughs> that, that, that must that, have been nice. refreshing. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was extremely refreshing, Dane. But that's besides, besides the point. I'm back here now, and I want to see what kind of action we get in on. Oh, well, we've, we've got about five things. minutes left. You're done. <laughs> yep, you've been sleeping. That's how slick that Where'd Charlie is. go? He left. Yeah, Charlie had to go. 
How long has he been gone for? <laughs> he took off a while ago. Charlie's an important guy. He's got things to do. He's going to order custom wheels for a one of nine car. Yeah. Uh, you know, computer like all of us were going to like all of us were going to do at some point today. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, well, I'm exactly. doing that around five, right? <laughs> so yeah, he's beat me to it, but I, yeah. I guess that's totally fine. So anyway, did everybody learn? Felt like they learned something from this? It's not like we had a lot of good questions. Yeah, we had a lot of good questions. I I personally enjoyed this. I, I love doing Q and A's with you guys, anyways. But when yeah. we're in the podcast studio, I always want to show things. Right. You want to get out and yeah. do oh, it. Oh, let's, let's so this was awesome. I love that we got a couple of questions. Hey, try this combo. Show me this versus that. So we got to do that. We pulled 3,000 grit sand marks out with Uno Protect. No, you didn't. Right yes. here. Right up Show here. me right where. Here. Right there. That Things looks like you did. Yeah, we did. Okay, I guess <laughs> so I believe you fun. now. Um, All right. Yeah, things were said. Fun was had. Okay. Um, That's sorry, you missed it. Yeah, People lost better. some money, I guess. Okay. Money changed hands. Yeah. So uh, no, it was a great session. Again, thank you to everybody who's tuning in and submitting questions. This was a this is a blast. Probably my favorite yeah. Q and A I've ever done. So well, and it went by Absolutely. fast. It did. You know, you yeah. got a lot of questions, a lot of answers, and had a couple challenges, a couple gauntlets thrown down. No so way. So to speak. We used, hopefully, hopefully we used they a picked DA them back up. They, it wasn't the towel. Oh, thank God. They're actual like, okay. oh, metal, metal gauntlets. gauntlets. Yeah, I, think I heard we some it. clanking We back did there. his truck. I was like, who's trying bad. to wake me up from my nap right well, now? Well, that this was me. We were throwing them down, and it, I mean, it, it happens sometimes. Okay, I understand. Yeah. All right, right guys. It. I'm going to request you go through the products now. You've got five <laughs> Dean, minutes. you're ruining all of our fun. Where right. are you? Are you still back in that closet? I'm just a voice in the air. Nothing more. All right. Well. So, without tools, any further ado. Yeah, without any further ado. So, we used, the, initially, I cut with this, uh, thinking that a 3,000 grit sand mark, I'm going to need our co coarse wool. Of, of course, right? And our coarse oh, DA compound, yeah. which did great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Charlie even said, Charlie, you know, famous painter, famous. probably like one of the famous. best. One of the best painters in the world said that my buffing was very impressive. So, wow. I'm just going to leave that there. We tried that. That okay. did an amazing job of cutting. We also experimented with Uno Pure. Uno Pure. And our wipe as a second step. Maybe to mm. gloss it out, to gloss right? It up, and okay. then we wiped that with panel wipe just to show there was no filling. It mm. didn't go backwards. So, coarse cutting, ultra fine. And in the middle, we have the yellow, which is the DA fine. We tried that with the yellow wool and the yellow foam. Yeah. Troy did some of that on the truck. Was getting excellent results. The pillars on this thing are as shiny as they're ever going to be. Oh, my gosh, our, they are. Our, I was blinded <laughs> by the light. Sorry. <laughs> our Very apologies shiny. to John, though. Only, only the pillars are shiny. So yeah. there's a, it's, it's it's like a, the and part of the hood. It's, sure. a, it's a patchwork of polishing. But, I'm sure you know, that'll be worth the money he paid, right? That's but right. we did. getting paid, right? No? With the exception okay. of the one weird experiment that was requested that we use the yellow wool with a rotary and Uno Protect just to see what it would do. Yeah. We stuck purely with DA. Mm -hmm. I did everything with a 15, and we were able to easily pull out 3,000 grit sand marks with multiple products, and then yeah. we were just bumping gloss up with other yeah. steps. I mean, it's so this is it. This is the new DA system. This is the stuff that we're selling that's compatible with 15s, 21s, minis, nanos, the melee. If it's an orbital tool, these are the products for it. These three foam pads, these two wool, and then not pictured, obviously, the microfiber, which we spent most of the day just going, you don't need that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and I think the, the real key here is Bump and gloss. Bump and That's gloss. what it's all about. Bump, bump and gloss. Bump, bump, bump the gloss. gloss right? bump I get it. Bump it. Just bump it. Just yeah. a little bit, right? Just take it to 11. That's yeah. right. I, I like that. And so, well, I'm, I'm telling you right now, based on the way this this, this hood looks here, this looks killer. You that were with us when we got this there. out of the junkyard. I, yes, I was. You and Dylan literally <laughs> pulled this out of the junkyard. Yeah. And I was in the back of a Dodge Ram, right? You I were. I think I got a nail stuck in me, but that's besides the point. <laughs> I don't know why you were back there. You were looking <laughs> for air filters, and they're <laughs> usually in the front. <laughs> Levi, you'd be surprised where you'll find some oh, of these okay. things, okay. right? Well, you really got to dig stand around. Stand corrected. And so, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. But you guys pulled this we brought it in we actually did a live video yeah um, and that was pretty great and we showed off kind of you know what what we're working with here but I think that today you guys were able to make it look even better yep. uh, but there's still some areas that need there to are be. still some don't look at those we they save leave, those we, for you we're gonna leave those for some of the other companies right that yeah. want to get in on some of the polishing yeah right? maybe they so, want to want to resand this hood maybe we go down to primer Let's see if we can get I wonder some. Wonder what kind of primer they were using on. Yeah. We'll get some 2K clear. I'll yeah. shoot it on, right? We'll let it bake overnight. Great it'll idea. Be fine. Charlie may not will, work. Charlie will be rolling over, and he'll be like, "Oh my!" The God. last appearance he ever makes <laughs> yeah. here. He's like, well, "I'm not going, I'm going back, back to that once again." <laughs> no, I totally get it. Well, I think this is fantastic, and so at this point in time, right? So for people wondering where could they find most of the Rupa's lineup, because we do currently sell. Uno Protect, but we have not yet have uh, the DAA uh, polishes yet. And we have a lot of the pads. Yep, you guys have a lot of the pads, pads, and so hopefully you'll have the, the compound soon. But right now, if they need it immediately, go to rupususa.com, okay. hit the distributor locator tab, 
you can find somebody local. If mm -hmm. there's nobody local to you, we have over 700 independent distribution locations in the U.S. now, which is a ton, but yeah. that's still not enough to cover the entire U.S. So if you're in a market where maybe there's not somebody close, then obviously all the big guys online, your detailed images, your detailing.coms, your detailers domain, auto geek, clean garage, success garage, all those places, all the common places you find yeah. that kind of stuff, you can find them there and hopefully soon yeah. at the right company com. There you go. Oh, hopefully, we just made a whole video on them, so I think, <laughs> I I think we so. actually need them so. now, right? Yeah. So All anyways, right. Levi, take it away, man. Well, again, thank you guys. Thank you for, uh, Charlie, for coming out here, spending a little bit of time with us, hanging out with us, you know, giving uh, uh, Dylan a compliment to his polishing. I think that's really the, big, yeah. the, the biggest blowing. thing, honestly, yeah. that we did. But also, uh, as always, guys, you can check out the Rupes line. Make sure you subscribe to the Rupes YouTube channel. Make sure you check out a lot of their great products and all the cool stuff they're doing over on the channel. Thank you to Troy and Dylan for coming. Dane, are you taking us out of here or what's going on? I believe I am. I believe that's my sole job here is to take us out and into each Ooh. episode. So, out and uh, in. well, sorry. Do you have anything you want to say before no. it comes Go over to me? Finish it off. Thank up. you guys for having us. We had a blast. Yeah, so, thank you. No, it was great having you guys. It was great having Charlie. And uh, I think we had a lot of fun. Two hours just flew by. Absolutely flew. So thank you so much to you guys. Thank you so much to the people who watch. We really appreciate everybody who watched and shared these streams. We're going to be doing this all week. So whenever you can join us, we realize you may have some opportunities where you can or you can't. These will be available after the fact. So on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook, you'll be able to come back and actually go through the stream. So even if you missed it live, you'll have a chance to be able to watch it. But anyway, guys, thanks again for everything. And, uh, Let's take a look at what's coming up. Okay, so we've got Buff and Shine, we've got PNS, and we've got Detailer's Helper all coming up in the morning and a little bit of a debut. I think that's going to be something people should be excited about. Now, uh, obviously, that's, that's just awesome. So, guys... Thanks again for watching, and until tomorrow, where we start again, we're going to do this whole thing all over again with new people, new demonstrations, and uh, some surprises along the way. So, from all of us here at TRC, until tomorrow, adios.